Today, it's a Big 12 Conference primetime smorgasbord. Pick your poison. If you like hard-hitting defense, take a bite of Nebraska. If running and gunning are more to your taste buds, then that Tiger offense is just right for you. Whatever your desire, Nebraska and Missouri is the big ticket matchup of the day. Both these teams come into battle undefeated. Sixth ranked Nebraska is 20-0 against Missouri, but that was the old Tigers. This new animal is of a different stripe. They can run, they can gun, and they love to score, score, score. Two teams enter, one team leaves, undefeated. Then, a Pac-10 nighttime extravaganza. The 16th-ranked Trojans go duck hunting up north to Oregon. team in the NCAA, but they're going against the number two rush defense in the country, and once again, that Nebraska defense looks like the Nebraska defense of old. They're playing great defense this year. They've been suffocating their opponents. They've got a lot of stars on this defense, but the heart and soul of it is number 13, inside linebacker, the middle linebacker, Carlos Polk. Watch him tonight. He runs around wherever the football is, he usually is, and that's a lot of weight getting there. He weighs over 250 pounds, and he really packs a wallop when he gets to the ball carrier. Well, on the other side of the football, Missouri will have their hands full defensively, but Larry Smith said this is the best talent he's had since he's been here, but it all begins with a man among boys. Defensive end Justin Smith, number 96. He was the biggest recruiting tool of the Larry Smith era a year ago. He started as a freshman. He played every game as a freshman. So far this year, he's been a little bit frustrated, like his teammates have been, because they've given up too many points. Look for him tonight to start playing his potential, and once he does, this Missouri defense will really start to gel. Absolutely. Now, this is the first time since 1974 these two teams have met in the conference opener. That was also the last time that Nebraska opened the conference with a loss. Nothing corny about this rivalry. Nebraska, Missouri, straight ahead. Memorial Stadium, Faroe Field, in its 73-year history, has seen its share of memorable games and players, and the Missouri-Nebraska rivalry very much a part of its history. Great coaches and players have walked the sideline, like namesake Don Ferro, Dan Devine, and Nebraska icon Bob Devaney. Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers played in the rivalry. And the president was also involved in its history. But the most famous Nebraska-Missouri game involved Tom Osborne. Two years ago, the catch by Nebraska's Matt Davison. It was in the end zone on the north side, and that is where Eric Clemens is nearby now. Eric? Ron, I am near that famous north end zone. Infamous if you're a Missouri fan. Matt Davison made that fateful catch between the O and the U in that end zone. Since that time, however, Nebraska scored 90 touchdowns in 20 games. The only 13 of those touchdowns, however, have come via the pass. Frank Solich told us earlier, I'll take 90 touchdowns in 20 games any time. However, we have to be more multiple against a very physical Missouri team in this contest tonight. We'll be keeping up with the Nebraska pass and rush ratios throughout the game. Ron, back to you. All right, Eric, there is 55-year-old Frank Solich, only the third head coach in Nebraska history since 1962, and already the keys for Coach Solich. The number one key for the Nebraska University tonight is no turnovers. they got to take care of the ball. Last week against Southern Miss, they turned it over five times. The second thing, their defense has got to maintain its intensity. Right now, they're just being brilliant. they got to keep it up. Lastly, the punt and kickoff returns. Nebraska's got great return games. they got to utilize it tonight. And on the other side of the football, 60-year-old Larry Smith calls this a big challenge this year. A lot of talent, not much experience, his key first down. He's got to make positive yardage on first down. Five or six yards so Nebraska doesn't tee off and get after the passer on second and third and long. Secondly, they've got to control the quarterback. Crouch is a great quarterback. He cannot have a big game against his Missouri defense. And lastly, their punt protection and their punt coverage. 
It was horrible two weeks ago against Alabama Birmingham. They had two punts blocked. They got to protect their punters tonight. Well, Nebraska won the toss, and they have deferred to the second half. You can see part of the sellout crowd of over 67,000. They have had this date on the calendar circled since two years ago in the immaculate reception number two by Matt Davidson. Dan Haydenfeld kicks it away to Ricardo Rhodes and Travis Garvin. And it is Rhodes gets away. Still on his feet. You talked about field position, specialty teams. That is a big key as we start the ball game. And the Missouri offense, number 13 in the NCAA overall. Jim Doherty will be starting a quarterback. The sophomore will play the first two or three series. Then Kirk Farmer will take over. This is a two-quarterback system, and we will see both players tonight. Both are about the same as far as talent. Not much drop-off. Farmer behind, All-American candidate Rob Reedy, number 76 at center. I formation, Nebraska, everybody but one up toward the line. Doherty will put it up over the middle. The pass is incomplete. Intended for Dwayne Blakely, the big tight end. And the Missouri offensive line is led by Rob Reedy right in the middle. He could be the best center in all of college football. And demanded tight end that we just saw drop the pass. Tight end Dwayne Blakely. He could be the best since our man, Kellen Winslow. A lot of comparisons with Winslow and also with Alonzo Mays, former Oklahoma Stater. Second and ten, West and Black in the eye formation. And it is Black. Nothing doing. He will lose two on the play by that Nebraska defense, which is number nine in the NCAA in total defense. And let's take a look at the men in red and white. Kyle Vandenbosch will be playing right at the right defensive end. He is a junior at the linebacker spot. Julius Jackson had two defensive touchdowns last week. And in the secondary, Ralph Brown has started every game since coming to Nebraska. This is his 43rd consecutive start. And these are situations Missouri did not want to be in third and long. Watch Nebraska now get after the passer. Third down and 12. Nebraska rushing five, and Doherty is going to be tied up at the 35. Tony Ortiz with his second sack of the year. Nebraska's first to the ball game, and Missouri will have to kick it away. Ortiz came on a delayed blitz that time. Nobody from Missouri picked him up. Thus, he had a clean path right to the quarterback. One good thing is that Missouri has been able to not turn the ball over on the first series, but they've got the kick into this win, which is blowing right to left. This is a huge part of the game, the Missouri punt team. They did not punt one time a week ago against Western Michigan, but they had two blocked two weeks ago. And it is a bad snap. Gilpin has to track it down. He kicks it out of the end zone. And a penalty flag is also thrown. That is a safety. Boy, oh boy, Larry Smith's team have been snake bit the last couple of years in the special teams. Well, this is just a bad snap. Well, we're talking about punt team. We're talking about everything. The punt just goes right over his head. The snap just goes right over his head. Now, he did, couldn't fall on it, so he throws it out of the end zone for his safety. I think that was a good heads-up play. Well, Doherty's going to have to get on the headset, see what is going wrong. Nebraska defense very bonded, and even Larry Smith told us yesterday, Artie, that Yes, we've been very successful on offense, especially last week against Western Michigan. But he said, we haven't played a Big 12 defense yet. Right, but you know, Ron, you've got to be able to punt the football. And yeah. that's an offensive play. They were concerned about it. They've worked hard on it. But that time, the snapper, Ben Davidson, just let the ball sail a little bit too far over the punter's head. Now, this is going to be a little demoralizing for Missouri because yeah. it's something that they harped on all week long in preparation. they got to shake it off, though. And they will have to kick off to Nebraska. Nebraska, the number seven team in the NCAA in kickoff returns. They are very, very good. What a way to begin for Larry Smith. And he 
He knows that every special team he has tonight will be important. But we were at practice on Thursday. They practiced an hour, hour and 15 minutes on punts, kickoff returns, kickoffs, field goals, extra points. So it's not like he doesn't spend time on it. He spends time on it, but we're going to talk during the broadcast just how hard it is not only to coach, but to be successful on special teams, especially early in the year. Well, Randy Stella, number 34, normally a linebacker, back to receive the kick along with number 25, Joe Walker. That shows you the type of depth that Nebraska has. Gilpin kicks it away. It's a short kick. Nebraska, a little bit of confusion, but they will get great field position up to the 38-yard line. And Larry Smith knows that special teams will have an important part in this evening's ballgame. I think it would be a major factor. I, 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 it could very well come down to a, a kick. It could come down to a, a, um, uh, a return, a uh, block kick, whatever it may be. That could be the final uh, deciding factor in this game. I think that uh, those special teams players, and I've told our guys this, every one of them that goes in the field is going to be a very important person come Saturday night because they could determine that. He was looking into his crystal ball. High formation, first and ten for Nebraska, their first possession. Crouch's first pass is complete to Davidson. He has running room. Crosses the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Matt Davidson, the junior out of Tecumseh, Nebraska. And, of course, the quarterback for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the sophomore out of Omaha, Eric Crouch, making just his second start of the season. Of course, Bobby Newcomb started the first couple of football games, and last week they decided to make the change, put Newcomb at that wingback spot. Crouch says the butterflies are gone now that he knows he's the starter. First and ten for the Huskers. Fumble, but Nebraska retains it. Dominic Rayola is the center, the sophomore out of Honolulu, Hawaii. As we take a look at the Nebraska offensive line, Dominic Rayola, just a sophomore. He looks to anchor that line, and of course, running back and wide receivers, the man we saw catch the pass, Matt Davison, led the team in receptions in 98. Had the miracle catch in 97, and believe it or not, that is his only career touchdown reception at Nebraska. Loss of two on the play, second and 12. Dan Alexander, the lone setback. And it is Bobby Newcomb, left side, down to the 30. Carlos Posey coming up from that eight-back spot to make the stop. And we have a penalty flag thrown right at the 38-yard line. We'll wait and see what happens to that. Newcomb gets up gingerly. That might be holding that time on a Nebraska wideout. I believe it was number eight, John Gibson, held the defensive back. And that's what happens when you stalk block sometimes. Receiver gets up into a defensive back and sometimes hold them. It's number nine, Wilson Thomas. You're going to see him right here up top grab onto the defensive back. I can't see the number and just hold him. You can't do that in the open field. Now, Thomas is a young player. He's only a freshman. Last week was the first time he's played in a major college game. So he's just got to get used to the rules and keeping those hands inside. Nebraska yet to have a 100-yard rusher this year. They have tried to be a little more balanced this season, and they've been successful at that. Second down and 17. Crouch has time, rolls out, tucks it. Still on his feet. Gets up to the 45-yard line before Jeff Marriott and Pat Mingucci, number 77, come up with a stop. Frank Solich talked about throwing the ball early, and so far he has. And the Missouri defense, led by Jeff Marriott, the nose guard, third-team all-conference in the Big uh, 12 last year, Barry Odom. The senior out of Ada, Oklahoma, is the leader on defense, also a third-team Big 12. And in the secondary, Clarence Jones, a strong safety. He is untested as just a sophomore. Coaches have challenged him for today's game. Third and long. Crouch sees some pressure, swings it out right side to Alexander, and he is going to be dropped. Andre Roberson, the junior out of Houston, Texas, comes up with a nice defensive play. Now, Alexander weighs 245 pounds. Roberson weighs about 165 pounds. That was an excellent open field tackle by the little corner out of Houston. 
And Nebraska will be forced to punt. Dad Hayden felt the senior out of Des Moines. Iowa has had an excellent year so far. Great hang time, averaging just a shade under 49 yards a kick. Missouri has had much success on punt returns. They've already blocked one for a touchdown. Fair catch is being called for. And it'll bounce into the end zone, and Missouri will begin first and 10 from their own 20. Trailing two to nothing. Missouri with the football. Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by the all-new 2000 LeSaber by Buick. Re-engineered to be safer than ever. And by CDW. CDW Computing Solutions built for business. And those are the fountains out front of the Divine Hall, named after, of course, former coach Dan Devine. Along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to a sold-out for row field. In case you just joined us, Missouri has already been touched for a safety. 2-0, Nebraska leads as a snap on a punt, went over the head of the punter, out of the end zone. That's where we stand right now. Jim Doherty remains a quarterback, the sophomore from Edwardsville, Illinois, T.J. Leon, Leon and Zane Gilmore in the backfield. They will be alternating a lot of people. The option to Gilmore. Left side finds his way up to about the 24-yard line. T.O. Craver on the stop. Gilmore and Black will alternate at that tailback spot. They are completely different runners. Yeah, Devon Black, number 22, started the game. It's more of a north and south type runner. Gilmore is more of a shifty, east-west, take it to the house, faster type runner. It's a good complement or a good complement to each other. At second and six, Doherty out of the flat. The pass is complete to Kareem Wise. The senior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You know, when you think about Missouri's offense, you think about Corby Jones. Three and a half years, he was the starter here. Now he's playing up in the Canadian League. But this personality of the offense will not change. They are not a passing offense, and Larry Smith insists this is still a running offense. It is, and Larry Smith's a running coach, and he's a physical coach. And he knows the only way he could contend for the Big 12 title is to run the football at people like Nebraska, especially when the weather gets colder. Ironically, one of the strengths of their offense is their wide receivers, con considering they are a running offense. Jordy has to scramble. And he will be dropped to the 34-yard line by the rover position. Mike Brown, the senior out of Scottsdale, Arizona, one of the two Browns in the secondary. Ralph and Mike Brown, of course, went on a recruiting trip to Southern Cal. They were highly recruited. And, you know, Mike Brown calls him up and says, Ralph, I'm going to Nebraska. How about you? Well, these two guys, and Mike Brown is one of them, lead this Nebraska secondary, which I believe is the best secondary in all of college football. And one of their players, Erwin Sweeney, has been injured, and he's been a two-year starter. Second and eight for the Tigers. Leon and Gilmore in the backfield. It is Gilmore. Right side, nothing doing. Wrapped up by Tony Ortiz, the senior out of the Bronx, New York. This Nebraska defense attacks the running game. You'll see the linebackers are lined up about three yards off the line of scrimmage, and they attack the line of scrimmage. Watch this now. Watch Polk, number 13. He's going to get up in there. 37 Ortiz comes into your camera. They attack the runner as the runner gets near the line of scrimmage. This is why they are so good against the run year in and year out. The attacking style of their linebackers. Third down, we'll call it six. The pitch back to Gilmore. Oh, great job by the Nebraska right side of their defense. And again, it is Mike Brown. He is one of the best tacklers in all of college football, and he showed it on that play, Artie. Mike Brown has led this defense in tackling the last two years in terms of numbers of tackles. Watch him right up here. Watch what he does. He's going to see the play, and he's going to come like a heat-seeking missile into the backfield and tackle it for no gain. That is a great safety play that time by Mike Brown out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, Missouri will try this punt thing again. Joe Walker standing on the 25. Ben Davidson was the snapper. Jared Gilpin will kick it away. The alternate punter is also with Vince Sebo. Gilpin has had the better hang time. Again over the head. Running for his life. Gilpin looking to get rid of it. And Garrow Yepremian would have been proud.
My goodness. Well, what's Larry Smith telling his putter now, Hardy? Well, he, what he's got to do, he's got to settle his snapper down. And what I think Larry should do is maybe get his snapper right here, Ben Davidson, on the sidelines and take a couple practice snaps before he goes out. Now, Larry's trying to console him there. You're going to watch old Davidson just gets a little bit too much air underneath the ball. Snapping is a very difficult skill to master. And he hasn't done it in his first two snaps. Davidson has been recently put on scholarship. Nebraska with a football right up the middle crouch. He is such a dangerous runner. You know, you talk about the speed of Bobby Newcomb as Ben Davidson tries to shake it off. Still a lot of football left to be played, 62. But Eric Crouch is so explosive. Well, he's fast, and he was second in the 100 when he was in high school in the state of Nebraska. First down and 10, inside of 740 to play here in the first. 2-0, Nebraska on top. They keep it on the ground. Dan Alexander, the junior out of Wentzville, Missouri. Coaches are so pleased with this young man's comeback. He's come back from two major surgeries. Nobody really expected him to even play again, let alone start. And we asked the coaches last night, is he the Nebraska eye back? And they said, absolutely. Well, he, he combines strength, conditioning, and speed for that man, Frank Solich, who's the lifter of the year as a freshman, which was unheard of prior to him in this Nebraska football program. On second and seven, the pitch to Alexander, still on his feet. Nothing doing. We'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Now, for a Dr. Pepper game break, let's send it to our college football Saturday studios with Kevin Frazier. Ron, the bad blood matchup of the day. Colorado taking on Washington late in the game. All knotted at 24. Marcus Tuyasa Sopo hits Chris Jurgens for the touchdown. That's your game winner as Rick Neuheisel beats his former club 31-24. That's a surprise. Heck of a game, though. Oh, boy. Nice and close. Third down and long now. Great drop, left flat, good enough for the first down and then some. Complete to Sean Applegate, the senior out of Lincoln, Nebraska. That is his second catch of the year. His first was for a touchdown. Good protection, though, by that Nebraska offensive line. Nebraska's been known for offensive linemen on the run blocking, but here they just do an excellent job of keeping the Missouri defenders away from the quarterback. 69, Adam Jolts, the left tackle. Excellent job of moving his feet and using his hands. They are on the seven, and they have a couple of downs to play with. Crouch looking to put it up into the right flat. Touchdown, Nebraska! Matt Davison's first touchdown reception was in that same part of the end zone two years ago. His second touchdown reception is in the same part of the end zone. When you give up big field position plays, like the punt snap, touchdowns are easier to get if you're Nebraska. And Larry Smith knows it. he did not want this game to start off this way. And Nebraska on the board, 8-0 with 5.48 to play. The extra point by Josh Brown is good. Eric Crouch in his second start, obviously happy with the results so far. Nebraska leads. Nebraska owns a 20-game win streak over Missouri. They haven't lost here in Columbia since 1973, and they lead now thanks to a safety and a touchdown, 9-0, with 548 left to play in the first quarter. You still, you have this big emotional outburst by Nebraska. You have some, some brain cramps on your side, but I think Missouri has just got to regroup like Kansas State did this afternoon against Iowa State. Yeah, Missouri's a young football team. They just got to settle down. This is their first big game. I mean, the atmosphere here is like a bowl game, so they just got to settle down. Aiden Felt gets the entire leg into this one. Two yards deep it is Ricardo Rhodes. He is hit at the 18, stumbles his way up to the 23-yard line, and let's take a look at that touchdown once again. What happens here? Now, you're going to see um, 
Davison up here. He's going to catch the pass against Posey. But the key play comes from Willie Miller, the fullback. He blocks Clarence Jones coming off the corner on a safety blitz. He does it perfectly right there. That's the key to this play being successful. It allows Davison to get away from Posey. Watch big old Willie Miller step in there and does a great job of using his hands and using his feet. Excellent fullback blocking on a blitzing strong safety. Well, Jim Doherty remains in at quarterback. Devon Black back in at the I-back spot. Rob West, the fullback. Doherty, play action. Pressure is on. Great pass into the flat to Blakely, the tight end. Gets into Nebraska territory before Julius Jackson comes in from that weak side linebacker spot to make the stop. This big tight end, they're making comparisons to Kellen Winslow, but Blakely told me Thursday, I don't want to hear about that. This guy's a Hall of Famer. Blakely is going to be used a tremendous amount tonight in the offense. That time he sneaks out and he gets his big six foot four, 268 pound frame going down the field. An ex basketball player out of St. Joe's High School, this man is a huge target. There's Kellen Winslow, number 83. He will be coming up, of course, on our halftime report with Kevin Frazier. Pick up a 29 out of play. Keep it on the ground. Black trips his way up to the 35. May have gotten down to the 34-yard line. But I think we saw in that play to Blakely already exactly what the coaches wanted. They wanted to find a way to isolate the big tight end on one of the linebackers of Nebraska. They don't think the Nebraska linebackers can cover him. Well, not a lot of people can cover him, strong safeties or linebackers, because he's so big and he's so athletic. And they're going to utilize him. He is one of the real threats in this Missouri offense. Utilize him. Second down with we'll Paul at six on the action. Black is tripped up at the 45-yard line. Theo Craver, the sophomore out of Holland from Texas, comes up with a stop. Devon Black, a very interesting story. Started out at Tennessee State. We see Jerry Burton, the offensive coordinator, right there. Former head coach at Rice. But he knows he needs to use Devon Black and Zane Gilmore, both of them. And Jerry's done a good job in his six years here at Missouri of incorporating his offensive philosophy based on what the talent is available. Just like with this two tailback and two quarterback system. He's done an excellent job of incorporating personnel into scheme. On third and seven, the three-step drop, nobody there. Intended for Eric Spencer, number 24, and that might be the end for Doherty for at least a couple of series. And once again, they'll be forced to kick it away. And this has been an adventure. Well, Doherty that time did not see Spencer. And obviously, Spencer didn't see the ball coming. But this happens with young quarterbacks. Sometimes the timing and the communication are off a little bit. I think Missouri's going for it on fourth down because Kirk Farmer, number 14, has checked into the game, the number two quarterback. Well, look for this to either be a pooch punt or a pass out of shotgun. Farmer can pooch punt. Only seven yards back of the line of scrimmage. And that's exactly what he's going to do. A safe play by Missouri, but Nebraska's still a pretty decent field position as they're going to mark it out at about the 22-yard line. And we'll step aside with 4.06 left to play in the first. Nebraska has hit a couple of home runs, and they lead 9-0. Number six, Nebraska leading Missouri, 9-0. Missouri really believed coming into this football game that this would be their year after dropping the last two games to Nebraska by seven points on each occasion. But Eric Kraft with a touchdown pass to Davison and a safety have given Nebraska the lead by nine. the middle nothing doing that is an emotional outburst by Missouri but Eric Clemens on the sideline they have not had a whole lot of emotional things to be happy about so far Ron especially after the second consecutive punt snap by Ben Davidson over the head of the punter you saw a lot of heads on the Missouri bench hanging just a bit but coach Larry Smith consoled Davidson once again Davidson still on the sideline working with the football now everybody's standing up as I already said earlier they just have to regroup a little bit settle down and rely on what's a good defense to maybe get them the ball back Guys. All right, Eric. Willie Miller, the fullback. Pharrell Buckholder down the eye back for Nebraska. On second and 12, Cox is going to put it up again. He's being run. 
And he is just going to have to throw it away. Smart play. Justin Smith, we saw him, big number 96, putting the pressure on Crouch. We saw this guy's speed on that play. Yeah, we talked about him in the open as a key to this defense, and he has made two spectacular plays on the last two plays. You're going to see him come from the left of your screen and chase down Eric Crouch from behind. Now, that is a big man that they affectionately call Godzilla chasing the quarterback from behind. This guy will be an All-American football player here at Missouri before he goes on into the NFL. He is something special. Third down and one. Crouch with some time into the flat up to the 32-yard line. The officials are going to say it is a catch. And that'll be close to the first down. A great case of finding exactly where the yardage markers are by Matt Davison. It was a good throw that time by Eric Crouch, too. He put that ball right on a dime. Nice velocity. He knew exactly where he was going to throw the entire time. Well, they're going to force him to measure it, and they have to bring the chains from the other side of the football field. Davison thought he was about two or three feet farther, but the officials moved it back, and you can see just how close it is. Well, you'll see the reaction from Larry Smith, who's standing right there by the officials, whether it's a first down or whether it's fourth down. Look at Larry. He's going to take a look. Game of inches. That was close. Well, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, it's the NFL this morning. This week's special guest is Detroit Lion quarterback Charlie Batch. The Lions are one of the early surprises in the league, thanks largely in part to the play of Batch, and take a 2-0 record into their showdown with the Kansas City Chiefs tomorrow at Arrowhead Stadium. That's NFL this morning, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on Fox Sports Net. First and 10, balls on the 32 for Nebraska. Don't worry about your makeup, watch the football game. I was talking to Hardy. <laughs> You're going to see Nebraska now substitute a great deal. They play between 15 and 16 offensive players. Sometimes it's two tight ends. Sometimes it's three wide receivers. They substitute more at Nebraska now than they ever have in the past in offensive personnel groups. Well, they don't want to be stagnant offensively. Crouch will run the action. The pitch. The running room. Jumping up ahead is Pharrell Buckhalder, the junior out of Collins, Nebraska. Here's a young man that early in September missed three or four practices. Nobody was sure what his future would be, but he went in, sat down, talked to Frank Solich. They got it ironed out, and he's back on the field. You know, and he's the only tailback at, at Nebraska that survived spring practice. There were a lot of injuries. He's the one back that got through spring practice healthy. He's a talented player, and he's probably the fastest back. You can see the total offense, Missouri only three yards. We knew it would be a problem for him. But stacked up at the line of scrimmage, the Black Shirts of Missouri with a great stop. Missouri's talented on defense. The first two games this year against Alabama, Birmingham, and Western Michigan, they were kind of razzle-dazzle type of offenses. A lot of wide receivers, not a real running game. So this is a test tonight for this team. And so far, they're meeting the challenge, especially in the run game. Now they meet the challenge of third and three. Inside of 145, left to the first. Crouch is going to change things up at the line of scrimmage. Keeps it himself. Looks for the sticks. Reaches over. Does he get it? Yes. Julian Jones from the free safety spot tripped him up, but not before Crouch reached out and touched that flag with his six-foot frame. Crouch can run. He's almost a running back playing quarterback. He's fast and he's athletic. Reminds a lot of people of a faster Scott Frost who used to be the Nebraska quarterback. But make no mistake about it, Eric Crouch is an excellent athlete, and Missouri has got to control him tonight. Otherwise, they're not going to win this football game. Absolutely. First and 10, ball on the 43 for Nebraska. Moving again. Crouch with some time, going deep, looking for Davison. Davison high in the air, intercepted. Julian Jones. Carlos Posey with the tip. Jones with the interception, his first of the year, and high five from the box.
Nebraska had five turnovers a week ago against Southern Miss, the first one tonight. Now you're gonna see Jones and Posey deep, deep, the ball gets tipped up in the air, Davison goes up for it, and Jones comes down with it. That's good competition between wide receivers and defensive backs. That time the prayer wasn't answered. Frank Solich was concerned about turnovers, and Missouri has a new quarterback. He is number 14, Kirk Farmer, the 6'5 redshirt freshman out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Nebraska showing blitz. Seven men on the line of scrimmage. Farmer with time, looking for his tight end, tucks it and runs. Takes a shot as he gets up to the 27-yard line after a pickup of eight on the play. The offense will not change with Farmer in the game. Both he and Daugherty are identical in terms of what they can do. And that makes it easy for the offensive coaches not to worry about two different game plans. Run the same game plan with no matter what quarterback is in the game. And that's really a blessing when you have a two-quarterback system because if guys have different abilities, Ron, right. then you're going to change too much. Well, his father was a quarterback here at Missouri back in 69 and 71. A couple of years. Second down and short. Perfect situation for this Missouri offense and Zane Gilmore able to get the first down. They call him Happy Gilmore. Now, Gilmore, an interesting story. The sophomore out of Tampa, Florida, really pronounces his first name Zain, which means beautiful and nice. His middle name is Jabbar, which means huge and powerful. I think well, two of four fit. Yeah, he's pretty good. You know, in 1997, he was Mr. Football in the state of Florida. So he's a talented man, and the Missouri coaches are excited about his future here carrying the football. Well, he's given the Tigers first and ten. Leon and Gilmore in the backfield, and Farmer will put it up for the first time, and he is picked off. Julius Jackson with the interception, his third of the year. Jackson had two defenses, defensive touchdowns last week. Picks off his third interception of the 99 season. Well, he was a defensive player last week in the Big 12. Now watch him here. He's going to drop that. It's a simple zone coverage, and Farmer just doesn't see him, and he throws the ball right to him. Wow. you got to look down the field a little bit better than that. And that is Farmer's third interception of the year. And you know what? Mike Brown would have caught the pass, too. Mike Brown would have picked it off if Jackson had not stepped in front of him. And there's one happy guy out of Gainesville, Texas. A big play linebacker. Final play of the first quarter. Crouch will keep it. Look out. Goodbye. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's set up by that man. Crouch takes it the final 31 yards on the final play of the first quarter. Crouch gets outside, but number 15, Willie Mill, right here, makes the key buck. That's great blocking in the alley by the fullback. You got to stay on your feet to stop option football, and that time, Willie Miller makes the key chop block in the alley. Josh Brown with the conversion, and it is good. Willie Miller doing his best Joel Makovica impression. Crouch gets his sixth rushing touchdown of the year, and as we end the first quarter, Nebraska leads it 16-0. We'll be back. It is the first time Missouri and Nebraska have ever played in the month of September, and that has allowed people to fire up the grills and enjoy the fine weather here in Columbia. Temperature today in the 80s. And the food has been good, and they've been tailgating since about last year at this time, I think. <laughs> And we are inside of Faroe Field along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens. I'm Ron Thulin. It is a bowl-like atmosphere, over 67,000, a standing room only crowd. And right now, number six, Nebraska has jumped out for the 16-0 lead as we begin play in quarter number two. And those 16 points are a little bit misleading because they've all been set up by field position. Right now, Nebraska's operating on a short field. Ricardo Rose, Travis Garvin. Kick will go deep into the end zone. Rose is going to take a knee, and rightly so. Now the special teams have made a couple of blunders for the Tigers, and it has cost them dearly. Well, stat number one goes over the punter's head, and he ends up being a safety. Stat number two goes over the punter's head, and all it does is give Nebraska 
sensational field position, which they end up capitalizing on. Field position is a result of big plays and negative plays in the kicking game. Now Kirk Farmer returns to the lineup as the quarterback. He said he feels good about coming off the bench because he gets two or three series to see what Nebraska is doing from a different point of view, and he doesn't mind coming off. Farmer with a five-step drop, rifles it, didn't hit the cutoff man. But this Nebraska defense is so good, they're in the top ten in four different categories. And Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator of Nebraska, says, I like these guys. They remind me of the Georgia Junkyard Dogs. Well, they're all smart, they're all athletic, and they all can run. And they know Charlie McBride's system because they've all been here since their freshman year. Most of them have redshirted. Guys like Polk, number 13, backed up Jay Foreman for two years. He's ready and eager to get a starting role, and he's taking advantage of it. Yep, Lehman in motion for the Tigers. Keep it on the ground, straight ahead, nothing to it. Devon Black. And there is Charlie McBride, who is considered one of the finest defensive coaches in all of college football. He's been in Nebraska for 23 years. He helps coach the defensive line. He is, in a lot of ways, a genius because he doesn't try to be too complicated. He's kind of an old-fashioned, old-school coach, but he knows exactly what to do to take away an offensive strength. He's as good as there is. Now look at this field position here. Nebraska starting on their own 39-yard line, Missouri on their own 25. Missouri will try to right side. Devon Black trips his way up. He's short of the first down. Mike Brown on the stop. I think Charlie's greatest comment to us the other day was, this defense is so good, I haven't blown up at him yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I said, Charlie, it's a lot of football left to be played. Well, we'll try this punt thing again. Charlie McBride's defense doing the job once again. And it again is Jared Gilpin. Snapping is very difficult. That's why some guys make National Football League teams, because they can snap. It's a hard skill to perfect. As we look at Ben Davidson, the snapper, number 62. Nebraska said they would go after the punts, and they look like it right now with seven on the line. Here they come. Gilpin, excellent hang time, and the crowd loves it. Joe Walker at his 22. Spins to his right. Nothing doing. Excellent job by the special teams. A 51-yard punt, but more importantly, Gilpin had a hang time of better than 4.4, and that man had a great snap. Well, he had to settle down. Like I keep saying, it's not easy, especially when you got a 300-pound nose guard breathing over you. Boy, that's a tough thing to do. We'll step aside. Nebraska leads. We're in the second. Net. Nebraska going for their 100th win in the 90s. They will be the first D1 team to do it in back-to-back -back decades. And right now they have a 16-0 lead. We are in the second quarter. Frank Solich in his second year coming off a of season 9-4. A lot of injuries last year. Undefeated at 3-0 this season. High formation. It is Alexander. Ball is loose. Missouri says they have it. Let's see. Yes, the Tigers have it. That is the 12th fumble by Nebraska this year, the seventh time they have lost it. Justin Smith with the recovery. And we asked Frank Solich, what is it? You have more fumbles now than you've had ever. Well, sometimes it's like a disease. You just can't get rid of it, and you don't know the reason. But I know one thing, that this could be a huge factor Absolutely. in some change in momentum here in this football game. You're going to see the handoff inside, and ball gets loose in. Boy, there's a big pile there, but... Somebody comes up with it from the University of Missouri. I believe it was Justin Smith. Yeah. Now Missouri with some excellent field position. Ball at the 31-yard line. Nebraska stacking the line of scrimmage, and they are able to stop Devon Black. We have seen so many teams already going to two quarterback systems. Larry Smith, back in July, he told us, you know, I'd rather stick with one guy. Now he's not so sure. He's called Bobby Bowden, Steve Spurrier, Dick Tomey. And he's talked about it, but it's no big deal now to him. Well, because both players are very similar. They're both young. They're both still learning. They even look alike. But this man is a good football coach, Larry Smith, and he would not have done it if he didn't feel, number one, it was workable, and two, it was best for this football team. Well, Jim Doherty is now back in at quarterback. Play action being rushed. Dumps it off in the flat, and the pass is dropped. 
Jerome Bolo hit him right in the chest. Now, for our National Car Rental Game Summary, let's send it down to Eric Clemens. Well, as you guys talked about, it's a game of mistakes, and Nebraska has taken advantage of them. Matt Davidson, three catches, 44 yards, and a touchdown, no deflection necessary. Eric Crouch, their most dangerous offensive player, according to the, the Missouri defensive coaches, five carries, 47 yards. And look at the rushing and passing for Nebraska. We told you we'd keep up with it pretty even so far in the game, guys. Exactly what they wanted to do offensively. Right, and what's even, they've called about the same amount of runs and passes. Third down and nine. Missouri with a golden opportunity. Doherty scrambling. Close to pass interference. It is not called. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Dwayne Blakely, the big tight end. And Keo Craver was close. And he might have hit him before, but it was a good defensive play that was very, very close to being pass interference. You're going to see Craver come from behind, number three, and yeah. that's very, very close on Blakely. But you look here, and you say Blakely is the go-to guy in that situation. And the crowd reacts because they just saw that play on the jumbotron here. Well, that man did not throw a flag, and neither did his counterparts. So it wasn't a penalty. It was not a penalty. So at, spotted at the 37-yard line, they will attempt the field goal. Brad Hammerick. His longest is 48. This is 47. He has the distance, and it is good. He is four for four on field goals in 1999, and Missouri has gotten down to the board. 16-3 is our score. Just over 12 minutes left in the second. College Football Saturday at Fox Sports Net is brought to you by CDW. CDW, computing solutions built for business. Beautiful day in Columbia, Missouri, and it is a beautiful evening. Perfect for college football. Capacity crowd of over 67,000 on hand. And right now, Missouri has finally gotten on the board, 16-3. to They had to come away with something on that possession. Yeah, mentally, it just puts them back into the game. And I, I really think in that first quarter, it was just a young football team being a little nervous and being a lot hyped up. And we know the center, Ben Davidson, was really too hyped up. But they're all settling down now. is the 25 penalty flag is thrown well Randy Skull I should say penalty flag is thrown and we'll have to wait and see it probably is against Nebraska Missouri coming over to talk to our referee It is against, it is excuse me Ron it is against okay. Nebraska a couple of the Missouri defenders there are pointing back the Nebraska way but you know Holding in on the return team, 15 yard penalty, first down. Because of the angles that players get put in when they're covering kicks and they're blocking, there's holding, there's blocking from behind, there's, there's clipping on almost every return in the NFL and in college football. I think it's something they ought to really consider changing the rules on. Because these are devastating penalties because they really can back an offense up and you can lose 15 to 20 yards of field position. Now Nebraska now is backed up. And we have a clock problem. Looks like the big clock and on the, uh, on the big clock there is nothing showing. I got to watch. I'll keep it. So the officials have to run over to the near sideline to talk about it. Frank Solich. As uh, Missouri goes on defense, this has been a very difficult week for the Missouri Tiger defense, starting really last week. Frank Solich has had his problems, but that Missouri defense also with theirs is their defensive coordinator, Mo Ankney. Wife passed away last week, fought cancer for 15 months, showed up at the game Saturday and coached it, said his wife told him he had to, even though she had passed away. We talked to him yesterday, and we agree with Larry Smith. This is a tougher man than any football player you and I have ever met. And it was almost coming to the game was therapeutic for him to get his mind off of the tragedy and into the game. But Mo is one of the class 
people in college football and our, our, our best goes out to him and his family in a, in a tough time in his life. He means so much to these players and he is a wonderful man. He, 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 was, he, he was with Larry in Arizona and, and did a great job with that Arizona defense over a decade ago uh, for Larry Smith. Well, Eric Crouch has tasted success so far this evening. He has run for a touchdown. He has thrown for a touchdown. The clock is still off, so they're going to have to keep the time on the field. One clock, however, is working, we can see, in one end zone. And Larry Smith will have to look to his right to find out how much time. Nebraska, first and ten, ball on the 13-yard line. Crouch is going to keep it, have some running room. Into the secondary, up to the 27 for a Dr. Pepper game break. Here is Kevin Frazier with our upset of the day. Guys, how about this one? The Stanford Cardinal are for real in the Pac-10. Durrani Pitts with his second touchdown of the day late against UCLA. The Cardinal 3-0 in the conference with the 42-32 win. It's amazing. They just got waxed early in the year <laughs> by Texas. But they, they've thrown that game away. And now they've come back and won three straight. Crouch looking to pass. Over the middle. Has a man open and is incomplete. Intended for Bobby Newcomb, and he is down for the count. Julian Jones, the junior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, they call him quietly strong. Nothing quiet about that hit by Jones. Well, you know what happens? The ball is in the air a little bit too long, and Newcomb has got to go up for it, and he leaves him so vulnerable. And Jones just comes over and says, hey, Bobby, don't come down here again. <laughs> I, I, that's what safeties do. Uh, you know, there's been some great safeties in college yeah. football, but they're all those hitters inside. And ironically, Bobby Newcomb talked to former Husker quarterback Tommy Frazier, among others, last year about how the hits he's going to take in Nebraska will affect him. Here he gets one as a, as a wingback. On second down. Up the middle, a little bit of running room before Pat Duffy. The junior out of California, we have another penalty flag, Grove. The option offense works when the quarterback can generate yards. This year, Nebraska's offense has become a little bit more of a quarterback offense in terms of the option. Everybody's down on the Nebraska tailbacks, but it, a lot of it's because they haven't gotten the opportunity, especially on the options. Randy Kristall, our referee. He looks like he can play tight end, doesn't he? Face mask. It's a five-yard penalty and fishing for a first down. I've always felt there are more face mask penalties against option teams because the quarterback's running and guys are running and reaching out because they're thinking the ball is going to be pitched. Quarterbacks in option football cause face mask penalties. Go back to the old days in Oklahoma. You were there for right. a lot of those games. It happens a lot in option football. Now first and ten for Nebraska. Just over 11 minutes left. Another penalty flag is thrown into the pack of players, and it looks like it might be holding. Crouch just had to sit on it. Nebraska did not want to be predictable offensively, and I think we've seen through the numbers that they haven't been thus far, and it is holding against the Huskers. Well, last season they if you can say dropped to sixth in the NCAA in rushing and you can see this year 193.3 and they averaged over 300 yards in the 90s. That, that is just absolutely amazing. That is their lowest average last year since their last year's average the lowest since 1976 when they really were a passing team. Well you know this year and, and it's been a, it was a little bit of a problem last year they are not generating as many big plays in fact this year they've only had two runs of over 25 yards and you need to get those big chunks to, to get the three and 400 yards and right now they're not doing it. Now coaches still believe they could be a very good offense they're behind a massive offensive line as usual. First down and a bundle, we'll call it 23. Crouch looking a little hook pattern, overthrown, intended for Davison. Coverage put on by Carlos Posey. You know, we talked about Mo Ankeny, but from a football standpoint, 
he was very, very nervous about his quarterbacks and also his safeties coming into this football game. It's because they haven't played very much, and quite frankly, they got exposed a little bit in those first two games. But I go back to what I said before, Ron, is part of the problem Missouri had on defense in those first two games was the style of Alabama, Birmingham, right. and Western Michigan. They'd have four receivers on one side, and then they'd line up with three tight ends in the backfield on the next time. So it was all kinds of different stuff. And I bet you don't get a feel for your defensive football team from a physical standpoint when you're playing the razzle-dazzle stuff. Well, Nebraska wants to call a timeout as they're facing second and long, second and 23, and Eric Crouch wants to talk about it with Frank Solich, who, like Tom Osborne, calls all the plays. 10.51 left to play in the first half. Well, coming up after our game, it's more exciting college football action. As most of you will see, USC versus Oregon. USC, of course, led by quarterback Carson Palmer. Three touchdowns this year. Oregon, pretty good quarterback themselves, A.J. Feely. That's more great college football action coming your way next on Fox Sports Net. There's Carson. And the numbers on him this year, just a sophomore. Big time recruit for USC a couple of years ago, and that game tonight will go a long way in deciding the Pac-10 champion. I think Mike Bellotti has just done an outstanding job at the University of Oregon. Doesn't every game this year could have an impact yeah. on the Pac-10 standings? I know. Wow. After what we've seen, it's been a crazy year, and we've talked to numerous coaches about it, and the word parody keeps coming up. Oh, it is parody, and it's. That's our, uh, produ our producer, Mike Helling, by the way, and he does have that pipe in his mouth with the Argyle Sox in our truck right now. <laughs> Who was that? Who was that? I have no idea. Hopefully it's that young man's dad. Second down and long and 67,000 are standing. Crouch is going to be dropped. First sack of the evening and it is about the guy I already talked about at the top of the show Justin Smith what makes the sack though is the coverage downfield Missouri does a great job watch these guys back here watch that they do an excellent job of blanketing in man and free safety the Nebraska receive there is nowhere to throw nowhere to throw football in there as a result Justin Smith turns it loose and makes the sack that's a coverage sack and we have a whistle and I think it's a substitution penalty because the penalty flag was thrown on the far side and it may be against Nebraska. They may move them back even farther. They're already at third and 31. We've seen this penalty numerous Dead times ball. this year. Substitution infraction by the five-yard penalty. Let's go back to Justin Smith. We saw him make that great uh, sack. Here's a guy that coaches told us he's not playing great football right now. Well, for him. Well, you know, he's only a sophomore. And he, he was, you know, he played as a freshman last year. And it takes time to get used to playing games. This is only what? His 14th or 15th yeah. game. But watch him here now. He'll get after the passer. He's lined up as a left defensive end. They need to get to St. Louis for the first down. Right up the middle. Some running room up to the 30 to the 35-yard line. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Corel Buckholder. On the carry. The defensive linemen are in pass rush mode. Now watch Smith come up the field. Oh my goodness, it's a handoff inside. But he was thinking pass. He's not there to stop the run. He's there to rush the passer and react to the run. The coaches will not be mad at him for that because Nebraska's got a punt. I'm really impressed with Justin Smith. He, he's going to be a big-time player here for Larry Smith. Pickup of about 21 on the play, but they still face fourth down and 12. Good snap. Nice high kick. Artie Johnson waiting at his 10. Has some running room. Penalty flag is thrown. It may be for not. And he is going to be shoved out of bounds at the 45-yard line by the punter, Dan Haydenfeld. But we have some laundry laying down at the 10-yard line. Artie Johnson, that is his second return of the year. 45 yards, but they're going to walk it back. He's only 5'6", but he's got some big-time quicks. And when he caught that football, he accelerated up the football field, which is what a good punt returner does. Again, I talked about it before, but penalties 
on the kick Play. in the kicking game. Illegal block in the back during the return. Holding during the return. The obvious penalty will be the illegal block on the back. back. That is the obvious penalty. Programming note this Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. It's hardcore football. This week's guest is three-time pro bowler Seth Joyner. Joyner played 13 seasons in the NFL and will offer a unique insight into the game. That's hardcore football Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. Angles in the kicking game. It's difficult for blockers to get under control and block coverage men without holding them or getting caught behind them. And that's what happened that time. Now Nebraska with their back to the wall inside of nine minutes to play in the first half. Ball is spotted at the five-yard line, first and ten. Give it to the first man through, the fullback, T.J. Leon, the redshirt freshman out of Norman, Oklahoma. The date that he has circled on his calendar for old T.J. and his family is the game against the Oklahoma Sooners. He told us he didn't even get a courtesy call for the Oklahoma uh, Sooners during the recruiting process. Well, but that's but he's come here and he's done a great job of making a name for himself here in Columbia. He's got a 19-inch neck. Did you know that? He can't buy shirts. I know. He's got to get everything tailored. Wow. Big neck. Gordy's still in the ball game. The pass is complete at the eight-yard line by Eric Spencer, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas. We saw a little bit of Jim Doherty's arm on that play. Yeah, it was a timing round. Just three steps. He gets the ball. One, two, three. It's a 90, and it's an out to the right side. Good throw, good delivery. Of course, Jim's dad is, was his high school football coach. And his dad played at Arizona State. Was a quarterback at Arizona State for Frank Cush. You read about this young man, the word that comes to mind is survivor. And he also makes people around him so much better. But it is third down at about six for the Tigers. They keep it on the ground, try that left side, short of the first down will be Gilmore. That was the right call there, because what you don't want to do, because Nebraska blitzed that time, is give up the ball in a blitzing situation where someone might come off the corner and knock the ball loose. And once again, Missouri will be forced to kick it away. Joe Walker standing on his 42-yard line. This is where you hope your center's got that snap down. Walker, still funny. Walker's one of the premier kick return players in, the, in college football. Not only on punts, but on kickoff returns. Well, last week was his first game back since the torn ACL prior to the bowl game last year. This is a line drive kick. Walker and everybody else just going to let it bounce because the Huskers will get excellent field position. Ball stopped at the 46-yard line. The punt goes for 40. And we'll take a timeout. 6.44 left to play in the first half. Nebraska struck early, but it is a 16-3 ball game. Coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report, Kellen Winslow and I will have scores and highlights from another crazy Saturday as the small programs of the world continue to challenge the big boys. That's at the break, but right now, let's rejoin Ron, Artie, and Eric with the game, guys. Thank you, ladies. Six minutes and 44 seconds left to play in the first half. Artie Gigantino, Eric Clemens, and Ron Thulin coming your way from Columbia, Missouri. The sun has set, but we are starting to really pick up the action here and knocking pads. Crouch play action. Into the flat, the pass is complete. Willie Miller, the junior out of Bellevue, Nebraska. good touch that time on the football with Eric Crouch getting outside. Now you're going to see 15, Willie Miller sneaking to the flat, but look at the perfection of the pass. That's called passing touch. I'll tell you what's not a touch, though, is tackling a guy like Miller, who's 250 pounds in the open field. Boy, is he a load. I, I love this guy. He was Joel McAvick's backup a year ago, and he's been hurt off and on in his Nebraska career, but boy, he looks like a real fullback. He's big, He's tough, and he's fast, oh. and he's hard to tackle. He's an old-time fullback. Yeah. That's the first down and 10 for Nebraska. Ball at about the 44-yard line of Missouri. 
Miller and Buck Carter in the backfield. Crouch just ducks under the big offensive line. Maybe picked up two on that play. Let's talk about that offensive line for a moment, Artie. The big offensive line. Here's here are guys that stayed together this summer. They added weight. They cut down 10% of their body fat. And the one goal they had, let's get back to rushing the football like we did two, three years ago. Well, the offensive line is synonymous with Nebraska running the football. And, and I'll tell you, they, sometimes the offensive linemen get criticized, and it's really not their fault. I don't think it's been as big a problem as some people have made it out to be, that they're not playing good. The Nebraska system allows and helps these offensive linemen to play good. Now, they average six foot four, weigh an average of 300 pounds. They all look the same. Uh -huh. When I was out here in practice last night, you can't tell any of them apart. <laughs> they have all short hair. They all are nice guys. They're all intelligent, but they all look the same. They have like a cookie cutter there at Nebraska. You know, they put out they put out offensive linemen. And Mil Bill Penniper, the offensive line coach, just does a brilliant job of coaching them. Well, Nebraska has called a timeout with 541. But Sunday at 9 p.m., it's going deep with host Chris Myers and special guest, recent Hall of Famer, fame inductee Lawrence Taylor. LT set the standard for how greatness is measured at the outside linebacker spot. He'll talk about his very interesting life after leaving the game. That's going deep with Chris Myers and guest Lawrence Taylor Sunday at 9 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. Write this down, Ron. Lawrence Taylor changed linebacker play Absolutely. in the National Football League by his ability to rush the passer, period. Bill Parcells was brilliant at utilizing him, but he changed the, the, the face of, of National Football League pass rushing. On second and nine, they pitch it back. Buckholder looking for some running room inside the 40, trips his way up to the 35-yard line. Carlos Posey coming up from that H-back spot. The corners of Missouri playing a little interesting style tonight. Well, they get, everybody gets caught inside in this one. It was a stunt, but you got to get up and get some run support. As we saw Clarence Jones, number eight, get knocked down and roll into your pitcher. There was no run support that time in the left of the Missouri defense. Well, of course, they want Clarence Jones to have that from that strong safety spot. They're still looking for their leader on defense as they face third down. We'll call it two. The pitch. Buckholder, left side, he gets the first down, a couple to spare, Justin Smith coming from the opposite side to make the spot. Well, we talked about Clarence Jones, the sophomore, he has to provide that run support. Well, watch him right here, he's playing strong safety, he thinks the ball's going outside, it comes back inside. Buckholder did a great job that time of starting to the outside, but then turning it up inside, which is why Jones started outside, had to stop, and come back. Clarence Jones is a key ingredient tonight to this Missouri run defense. He's the eighth guy, the ninth guy at the line of scrimmage. First and ten, Nebraska on the roll. The pitch to Buckholder. Inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Andre Roberson made the first hit. Justin Smith completed it. Missouri's starting to take Crouch out of this game. Every time he's running an option now, they're hitting him and making him pitch the football and allow their secondary to rally to the pitch. When you stop the option, you start with the fullback, you stop, secondly, you go to the quarterback, third, you go to the pitch. You can see that it's taken away inside, and they bring Buckholder. Buckholder comes back inside. He breaks a tackle. But that's what you want on defense. Let him pitch the ball and go run it down. High-risk offense for Nebraska. Look right, throw left, passes complete to number three, Matt Davidson. Spins his way to the 20, down to about the 18-yard line. That will be good for another first down. Roberson again on the tackle. Matt Duffy put a little pressure on the QB. Big time. You're going to see him come off the corner here, and he just levels over Crouch, and he almost causes mm. an injury right there. Eric Crouch, very cool on their heavy fire there, just getting that football off. And that wasn't a blown blocking assignment. No. You know, that was something you let the blitzing linebacker come, and you say you're going to get rid of the ball before he gets there. On first and ten, Nebraska inside the red zone. Banging his way to the 15 again, Buck Calder, Jamonte Robinson. Sophomore out of St. Petersburg, Florida on the stop.
Boy, this has to be a big defensive series for Nebraska, or for Missouri, we should say, with inside of three minutes left to play in the half. You don't want Nebraska scoring. That would continue to give them momentum. A stop would be just absolutely monumental for this Missouri defense. First man through, and again, it is Miller. Fighting his way, keeps the legs moving, may have gotten down to about the 12-yard line. But what we're seeing here is vintage Nebraska football. Just rushing the football. We're going to line it up. We're going to smack you upside your head. We're going to try to get some yards. And they open the game trying to throw the ball a little bit more. But now Frank Solich, as the signal caller, is into more of a run rhythm. They're running options. They're running the fullback. But they're also running the power sweep, you know, the pitch play to the tailback to both sides. So it looks like Frank Solich is into a rhythm right now in his play call. And he should be because the Nebraska offense is executing very well. Third down and a long two. Crowd keeps it. Pitches at the last moment. They're going to mark it out, however, at the 10-yard line. And it looks like it'll be about a foot short of the first down. Prior to that play, Nebraska was averaging about five yards a rush. They had over 110 yards running the football. Now, now, if it's fourth down, Frank Solch has got to make a decision. I think he was out of bounds when he caught the pitch. You see Crouch get outside. Now, Frank Solch will tell him when they're watching the tapes tomorrow, he should have kept the football, because he probably would have gotten the first down if he would have kept the football in his hands. Well, Josh Brown's going to try the field goal because it's fourth and about, oh, half a yard. And they're going to call a timeout. Frankie London, the holder, wants to talk about it. Because it's fourth and it is less than a yard. But I think Frank's making a good move here, don't you? Just get the points. Let's go into the locker room at halftime leading. You know, there's two schools of thought. You kick the field goal, you get the points. However, you send a message to your offense, especially your offensive line, if you go for it on fourth down and you make it. You're seeing people in college football Go for it now, more and more on fourth down. Just a reminder, coming up at halftime, the former Missouri All-American and probably the greatest tight end in this school's history, Kellen Winslow. He'll be joined by Kevin Frazier with scores and highlights, including a look at Florida versus Kentucky. They'll talk about that Iowa State game and, of course, the upset. And Kellen Winslow. Our All-American. And I think he still has that hey, mustache. Hey, what is this he? right here? I know, okay. can, can, he doesn't have a whole lot up there. I know he doesn't that. have it anymore. But it looks <laughs> the same. The mustache is the same. I, my favorite part about that is that when Kellen Winslow played, the current tight end, Dwayne Blakely, wasn't even born. You know what? I, I, I love Kelvin, but the, Dwayne Blakely might, might, you know, set, set all kinds of new records as a tight end here because he is an impressive young athlete. You know, Kellen gets the last word tonight. I know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's probably back there in the Cal uh, annuals right now looking for your picture back in the 70s. <laughs> Let's take a look at that Gigantino guy, huh? Now the field goal will be marked at the 17. It'll be a 27-yarder. Kick is up and away, and it splits the uprights. So Josh Brown with the field goal, and inside of 155 to play, and Nebraska has up their lead at 19-3. to We'll be back. The 93rd meeting between the Missouri Tigers and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Nebraska leading 19 to 3. The final minute 53 of the half. And this is Ricardo Rhodes. Up to the 24-yard line, and that is where Missouri will begin once again. We have not seen Farmer a whole lot tonight. I think he was in about a series and a half. Doherty has gone just about the distance, which is interesting. Well, Farmer, when he came in, looked a little rattled, to be honest with you. He throws the interception. He just was off target a little bit. And Jerry Byrne told us, hey, I'm going to go with the guy that's got the hot hand as the game goes on. But, you know, playing against these guys is not easy. Yeah, the absolutely. black shirts are a great defensive unit, and Larry Smith knows it. Well, Kirk Farmer has checked into the ball game. Final one minute, 46 seconds. Spencer in motion. Farmer keeps it on the ground. Up to the 28-yard line. Devon Black out of St. Louis. He's a young man that went to Tennessee State, decided to transfer, had some academic problems, had to sit out a year. Said he came back and he had to convince the coaches that he really wanted to play football and he really didn't get his scholarship back until this year.
Well, he hung in there, and I, I, I think that's the great thing about college athletics. Guys get second chances. He hung in there, and he's been rewarded for it. Second down and five. They're just going to keep it on the ground and try to establish some kind of running game. Again, it is black. Well, coming into this game, that's what Larry Smith really wanted to do. He wanted to take Black and Gilmore and run them up inside. Larry Smith is a Big Ten Midwestern type of coach, and he believes in the no-nonsense physical approach to football, offensively and defensively. And the way you're physical is to run the ball right down the defense's throats. Now, that's easier said than done when you're playing against a good defense like Nebraska. But I know that what you said is right, Ron. Yeah. He wants to establish some type of run physical mentality before they go in at halftime. Well, they had over 560 yards, about 560 yards in offense against Western Michigan last week. But Western Michigan is not Nebraska's defense. No, they're last in the country in total defense. And there is vintage Nebraska defense. Nothing doing. Warren Kaiser with a stop, and it was a big one of that. The junior had a farewell Nebraska. Missouri only 37 total yards so far in the first half. They lost 35 yards just on bad snaps in the safety. They just went into positive yards rushing the football, and they have rushed for three yards. Farmer, a little touch pass right side. Pass is incomplete, intended for Kent Lehman. I think the offense right now may have a little bit of confidence problem, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, because they're not moving the football, but again, I, I think what he was doing here, running the football was the right thing. I know the crowd didn't like it, but you want to establish yourself so you come back in the second half and it's, in your mind, 0-0 zero, zero, and you, you, you play this game. But they can't keep shooting themselves in the foot with special teams because right now you take away nine of Nebraska's points because of special teams' blunders. They only have two toes left from shooting themselves in the foot so much tonight. Final 18 seconds. Farmer with the pitch. It is back to Black. Right side. Has some running room. Crosses the 50 in the Nebraska territory. Clint Finley coming up from that free safety spot to make the stop. You, that was the best rushing play they've had. It, it was. And it was an option play. And you'd think Nebraska would be great against the option because they see it all the time in practice. But they have yet to play against an option football team so far this year. Cal, Iowa, and Southern Miss did not run an option. And Charlie McBride told us yesterday he was nervous a little bit about Missouri's option because his defense hadn't seen one in a game yet. Pick up the 12. Farmer will go into the shotgun. The rush, and he is going to be dropped and bent over backwards, back to the 43-yard line. Steve Warren. <laughs> now, now, you talk about an interesting guy. Here's a guy that is 305 pounds. He sings at weddings. That's what he does. It's a part-time job, and he sung the national anthem at a couple of Nebraska basketball games. Now, I dare to say he is the biggest singer in the country. <laughs> As far as I know, who, who's going to tell him he can't sing? And he's from Springfield, Missouri, so he's fired up to be here tonight. Timeout's been called with two seconds left in the half. And another programming note this week on Baseball Thursday. The Atlanta Braves and the New York Mets battled it out this time at Shea Stadium. Of course, the Braves swept the three-game series at Turner Field this past week. Or you'll see the Diamondbacks as they continue to prime for the playoffs as a second-year expansion team. They'll be hosting the San Diego Padres. That's the Braves Mets or Padres Diamondbacks this week on Baseball Thursday. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Larry Smith out of Bowling Green in Ohio from Van Wert, Ohio, originally. Frank Solich, born Pennsylvania, raised, spent most of his life in Cleveland, Ohio. Two seconds left to play in the half. Nebraska leads 19 to three. This will be the old Hail Mary. You're gonna see three players lined up to the bottom of the screen here. They're gonna throw the ball down the field. There it is, Farmer airs it out. Gets a lot of arm, a lot of white jerseys inside. Oh! It was almost a Matt Davison replay. Kent Lehman almost got the meat hooks on it, but that's the way the first half will end. Let's look at that one more time. Well, that's what happens, though, when the ball gets tipped in the air. Defensive coaches are always telling their DBs in those situations to knock the ball down, not up. 
You can see here, look at all these Nebraska guys right there, and the ball goes over the top. That could have been a touchdown for Missouri, but it's because the ball was tipped up in the air. Look at all those Nebraska guys up in there. Mike Brown, number 21. Wow, that would have been something. Well, that's the way our halftime will end. Nebraska with the lead, 19-3. Now with our halftime report, here's Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow. Thanks a lot, guys. Welcome to the College Football Saturday Studios in Los Angeles. The Nistan Halftime Report, Kevin Frazier, along with Kellen Winslow, the Missouri alum. And so far, things not really good. This is not the start that Larry Smith wanted for this team in this game. And no, it's not. He wanted to have a better job in special teams. You know, last week, they didn't punt the ball at all. Now we know why. It wasn't to their benefit to punt the football. But the turnovers are killing Missouri. Good field position by Nebraska, and they're taking advantage of it right now. And that's the difference in this ball game. All right, can they make the comeback? We'll find out later. And then, you know, you look at Eric Crouch, he's coming up the field here, and this is after a Missouri turnover just before the second quarter, and he gets the ball into the end zone. So this is the key in the ball game for Nebraska. Welcome back to the Nissan Halftime Report with Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow. Stanford trying to put the hurt on UCLA today. The one Stanford Stadium, third quarter, 21-3. This is a great play in your own end zone. Go play action. They're going to bite. Then you go deep to a guy named Troy Walters. Hey, Kevin, I might have to consider him for my Heisman list. Yeah, you're making amendments Moving now. up there, you know, I might have to look into 98 it. 98-yard touchdown there. Stanford is 3-0 in the conference for the first time since 71 when it was the Pac-8, and they were the Indians and not the Cardinals. And let's go back to our game. Nebraska leads Missouri 19-3. Got to give Kellen some credit here because it's going exactly <laughs> as you scripted it. Am I ever wrong? Don't make, don't do so okay. about that. Yeah, you it's going as I scripted because Nebraska's defense is playing up to par, and Missouri's committed some turnovers on their special teams, which is really hurting them. But Missouri can get back into this ball game if they get that running game going. All right, that's a mighty big up. Um, if up next, it's back to Columbia for the second half of our ball game between Missouri and Nebraska. Ron, Artie, and Eric are standing by with the second half. Should be a good one. We'll see if Kellen's team can get back in the ball game. Anyway, you've been watching the Nissan halftime report. Nineteen to three is our halftime score in Nebraska leading Missouri, and that snaps a string of twenty consecutive games in which Missouri led at halftime. I'm Ron Thulin, joined again by Artie Gigantino. You talk about the specialty team mistakes, but the bottom line is Missouri cannot run against this Nebraska defense. No, they can't run. They've got to establish a running game because they're not going to get back into this game unless they run the football. And on the other side of the coin, their defense has got to control Eller Crouch because right now he's got sixty yards rushing, and he's the key to this Nebraska offense. Well, you take a look at the numbers. You you can see just how futile the attempts were rushing the football. Only 39 yards passing for Missouri, 13 rushing. And we'll talk more about the stats as the second half continues. But Larry Smith still thinks he's in the game. Eric Clemens, you just spent some time with him. What did Larry say? Yeah, Coach Larry Smith felt his team gave Nebraska 16 of its 19 points in the first half. He simply said, we got to play Missouri football, especially when we have it on offense. We'll see what they can do here in the second half. They need to do something, guys. Thank you very much, Eric. You were absolutely right. It may start right now with this kickoff and a good defensive stand by Missouri. That would help them immensely. Larry Smith saying that he thought he gave them all the 19 points. Not sure about that, but we know for sure he did give them at least nine points. Well, you give them nine on the two bad snaps, and then you give them another one on the interception. So Nebraska's been playing on a short field. This is Randy Stella. Makes his way up to about... The 24-yard line, and that is where Nebraska will take over first and 10. What do you think of Nebraska will do here in the second? I think they're going to come out and run options. I think this young man, Eric Crouch, is going to crank up the option. Frank Solich knows he's into a little bit of a rhythm right now in calling plays, but also in getting Eric Crouch going. Like I said, he rushed for 60 yards so far in the first half. Look for a lot of option football here in the second half by Nebraska. Because, you know, against Southern Mississippi a week ago, they only had 185 yards total offense and they only had 51 total offensive plays so they want to crank up this offensive machine tonight and they start on the ground straight ahead banging his way Dan Alexander out of Wentzville Missouri not really a slasher as far as runner but he does combine great speed and some pretty good strength you know what I like about him too in 1996, he was the state heavyweight wrestling champion. Not bad. And, you know, that's balance. And if a guy is a running back and a wrestler, I think they go hand in hand because it really helps his balance. He is an impressive-looking physical specimen. You see him and you say, whoa, what NFL team does he play linebacker for? 
and he has worked extremely hard to come back from those knee surgeries. Pick up a five on the play, second and five. Here comes the option. Crouch making the pitch, crosses the 30 up to about the 33-yard line. Will be about a yard short of the first down. Barry Odom, the senior out of Ada, Oklahoma, comes up with the stop. But the play was really made by Big 96 again. Watch Justin Smith right here. He's going to string it out, string it out. He's playing cat and mouse with Eric Crouch. Cat and mouse. And he looks inside and he rips. He takes his towel off, but he doesn't grab him. But he made the play so the rest of his buddies, Barry Odom, number one, had time to get there. Big time play by a defensive end. And here is the first big play of the second half. Third down and one for Nebraska. Missouri just overran it. And the first down is there for the Huskers. Well, Chamonte Robinson, number 55, blitzed the gap that time, and he ran right by the ball. And that's what happens sometimes when you blitz. Odom and Smith on the tackle. Watch 55. He's right up in there. He runs right past it, gets nicked a little bit by the fullback. But when you blitz into the backfield, sometimes you create seams. He's trying, though, and I thought yeah. it was a good call by the defensive coaches. Well, they weren't expected to blitz that much in the ball game, but first and ten for Nebraska. Crouch is going to mix it up on first down. The pass thrown behind the intended receiver, Matt Davison. Eric Crouch is an excellent athlete. He does a lot of things very, very well. In fact, in high school, when he was a senior, he was second in the state of Nebraska in the 100-yard dash. And that's amazing. And the guy who won it was Erwin Sweeney, who's an injured defensive back and a corner for Nebraska. This young man is an excellent, excellent all-around athlete. You know, talking to Frank Solich last night, he said that he really believes that this young man will have a great career at Nebraska as a quarterback. I do, too. The pitch to Bobby Newcomb, the former quarterback, dives his way, leans forward up to the 44-yard line. Julian Jones got a piece of him. And we talked about Bobby Newcomb last night and how he handled this whole situation. The, the school of thought, I think, nowadays in the 90s, you get demoted, in his case, and be considered a motion from first-team quarterback, you'd start to whine and moan a little bit. That is not the case for Bobby Newcomb, who is a very special individual. Well, I believe that it was a mutual decision between Frank Solich, the head football coach, and Bobby Newcomb to move to wingback. Frank did not make him do it. Bobby wanted to do it for the benefit of this football team. Third down and two for the Huskers. Crouch keeps it. Leans forward and may have gotten the first down. It is going to be close. If it is short, it'll be by about two feet. He tried oh, to reach the with the football, and it depends where the spot is. But, you know, he gets on the perimeter so fast, and he can see an opening up inside. He just takes it. And that's one of the keys for Missouri. You can't allow him to get to the outside and talking to the de defensive players and coaches. Number one key, we can't allow Eric Crouch to dominate this football. Right. You've got to control him, and if you're going to be successful on defense against the option, you've got to stop the quarterback first. I've always believed that. And it is a first down. First down, Nebraska. Now, this has been two third and short situation so far in this series. The Missouri defense is playing well. They just come up a little bit short, but they're playing well right now. I think I agree 100%. They've given up a lot of yards, as we mentioned. They've been playing a lot of run and gun, run and shoot offenses the last couple of weeks. But they've done a nice job on this big offensive line in Nebraska. Now, here's Nebraska spread out. They've got two receivers at the top and one at the bottom. Drops the pump thing. Look at deep. Let's it fly. Has a man there. Caught by Newcomb. Touchdown, Nebraska. He dropped a touchdown pass last week. Eric Kraut said this week, I owe Bobby Newcomb a touchdown toss. And the two quarterbacks give a hug. His first reception is a touchdown. Bobby Newcomb is an excellent athlete. He's fast, and he can outrun secondary players. And he did a nice job that time of slowing down and catching the football. But the ball was thrown perfectly. London on the hold. Brown on the extra point. Gets inside the upright. 
but Bobby Newcomb, the junior out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, a four-sport athlete in high school, shows his track speed on the touchdown catch. Fox Sports Net is brought to you by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. That's the five columns in front of Jesse Hall. And you can see it is an absolutely spectacular September night here in Columbia, Missouri, along with Eric Clemens and Artie Gigantino, number six, Nebraska, and a 53-yard touchdown pass from Crouch to Newcomb. Have the lead, 26 to three. Little harvest moon we're seeing tonight. Newcomb's first career touchdown reception, and it was a big one. And that'll make up for that drop last week against Southern Mississippi. It'll be Ricardo Rhodes, five yards deep, and he'll sit down on it. But the job was really done in the first two seconds of that play. Eric Crouch did a great job with a pump fake, and Missouri just bit at it. A lot of little things happen in the touchdown play. Now, you're going to see Bobby Newcomb right there. He's going to run in the side. He's pointing down the field. But watch Jones right here, the safety. He is going to bite on what he thinks is going to be an underneath pattern, and he gets out of his deep middle zone, and as a result, Bobby Newcomb runs right by Carlos Posey for the touchdown. He had no help in the middle from his free safety. Spencer in motion on the near side. Farmer, a little play action. Looking for somebody. Aaron Willis runs right by him, and Farmer makes lemonade out of lemons. Willis did recover. You can see what Missouri has done on first down, just over three and a half yards, but Nebraska at 8.8. .8. And that's a great average to have on first down, obviously. And in Missouri, you know, we talked about it at the beginning, wanted to get five or six yards as an average on first down, so you didn't let that Nebraska defense pee off on you in passing situations. And it'll be second and short, so they got about nine on that play. Straight ahead, good for the first down, and Missouri's starting to run it. Devon Black, the senior out of St. Louis, Missouri, on the carry. Averaging just over 172 yards a game rushing the football. That's fourth in the NCAA, but he is having his problems tonight. You know, you look at Farmer. Now, he's a scratch golfer. He bench presses 420 pounds, and he squats 600. He's an all-around athlete. I've never heard of a quarterback that can bench 420. He's strong. Probably the better runner of the two. Pitches back, Black able to get it, gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard on the play. Mike Brown comes up from that rover spot to make the stop. Well, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific, it's the NFL this morning. This week's special guests will be the quarterback of the Detroit Lions, Charlie Bads. The Lions, of course, 2-0, one of the early season surprises, and much of it is due to the play of Batch. Of course, they have their showdown with the Kansas City Chiefs tomorrow at Arrowhead Stadium. So join us for the NFL this morning, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific, on Fox Sports Net. Second down, we'll call it nine. Farmer looking to run the option. And he is not going to be able to pitch it because big number 96, Steve Warren, the senior out of Springfield, Missouri, comes up with the stop. And he's a dominator inside. And when he gets into a gap, he's hard to control. You see him here to the left of your screen, come up the field and just takes Farmer down like a bag and throw him to the ground. But that's a big man coming up the field with great agility. And I'll tell you, Bob Riddy, the center, tries to chop him, and it doesn't even affect Warren. He just keeps moving up the field. That's a great play by Farmer, though. The young quarterback yeah, had the poise to hold out of the football. Absolutely, didn't pitch it. But it does set up a third down and long with call of 15. Look out. Hit as he throws it, and it will be incomplete. Kirk Farmer had absolutely no chance on that play. Julius Jackson came right over Devon Black. Yeah, he was confused as to where to throw it and who to throw it to. Well, you're going to see Chris Kelsey here, number 57, just come in and just knock him down. And, well, I, again, I don't think Farmer knew who to throw it to. He throws it to one of his linemen, Aaron Crittenden, but he's not an ineligible receiver. And it hit him in the head. He wasn't even looking at the ball. But that's a lot of pressure for a young quarterback going back, and you've got about five Nebraska defensive linemen staring at you. Joe Walker standing at his 35-yard line. Gilpin again will put it away. He is at about his 12. Nebraska's showing a rush, but this time they back off. 
Gilpin, a line driver. Walker from his 35. Flips down at about the 37 yard line, 38 yards on the kick, two on the return, and Nebraska with a 26 3 lead, looking for their 100th win of the decade. They lead Missouri. Ball Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Turner Gill was a great quarterback for the University of Nebraska. They thought Bobby Newcomb would be the next Turner Gill. Now, of course, he's one of the coaches on the sidelines with Frank Solich. As Nebraska begins, first and 10 from their own 37-yard line. Barrett Crouch, a couple of touchdown passes, has run for one. And they're going to keep it on the ground, trying that right side. Dan Alexander barrels his way up to the 50. Pickup of 12 on the play, another first down. Eric Crouch made that play because he ran an audible at the line of scrimmage because he felt Missouri did not have enough players to the right of his offensive formation, ran a lead option, pitched the ball, and got obviously 12 yards. Another first down for Nebraska, just flexing their muscles. Straight ahead, good for about three on the play. You talk about winning traditions in the 90s. The name Nebraska comes to mind very, very quickly because their tradition has included a lot of winnings. Of course, the, the national championships, three out of four years under Coach Tom Osborne. You can see Florida State at 100. Nebraska could tie them today, at least momentarily, with their 100th win, and Florida with 96 wins in the 90s. The records go on and on. It's been the 30 straight bowl games, but that is very impressive right there. 100 wins in the 90s. Crouch gives it first man through the fullback. That is big Willie Miller. And penalty flags are flying. We have some late hits. And you can't lose your composure when you're trailing a football game by a bundle. Well, a guy like Willie, Willie Miller is hard to bring down. He keeps spinning and churning his legs, and sometimes defenders don't know if he's been stopped. Well, the officials are going to talk it over. Talked about the 30 consecutive bowl games, an NCAA record. How about 30 straight nine win or more seasons? Also an NCAA record for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty, and it's third down. A little overzealous that time by Dominic Rayola, the center. You know, he's a guy that tries real hard. Watch him right here, number 54. Boom, get away from there. Now, he, he's had 35 pancakes this year, which is when an offensive lineman knocks a defensive lineman to the ground. But those 35 pancakes coming in were before the whistle was blown. That was clearly a late hit. But you know what? I love it when offensive linemen protect their running backs and their quarterbacks. Absolutely. But the coaches won't like it. <laughs> well, last year, Nebraska had fewest penalties in the Big 12. This year, they're not so lucky, averaging about seven penalties over 61 yards a game. And that is a concern for Frank Solis. Closing in on eight minutes. Crouch lets the rush come in. Davison with the reception. Gets up to about the 48-yard line. A wide receiver screen. And what it is, that's like a running play to this Nebraska offense. It's a quick throw out. It's a high percentage of the completions on that. And you hope that Davidson catches it and runs up the football field. Well, Nebraska has outscored their first three opponents 107 to 20. They're doing a good job defensively tonight. Looks like they're putting a lot of points on the board. But they are going to be forced to kick it away. Hayden Feld has done a nice job. Hardy Johnson standing at his own 10. High, high kick. Johnson back pedal into the five. Calls the fair catch, and that's where he'll have the football. You know how you say baseball pitchers have major league arms? This guy's got a major league leg. Well, it has been Eric Crouch's night tonight, no question about it. In only his second start of the year, he has done it running. Tonight, no question about it. In only his second start of the year, he has done it running the football and he's done it throwing the football. The so Davison for the touchdown. Showing some accuracy. And then, of course, he also did it on the ground with this run for the touchdown in the first half. You look at him and you say, all round athlete as he throws the ball down the field. 
to Bobby Newcomb. Does a lot of things very, very well. He may be coming into his own tonight. This may be quite a breakthrough game for this young man. You can see 67 yards rushing the football. Missouri has it trying to cut into that Nebraska lead, but that Nebraska defense is so stingy. Zane Gilmore out of Tampa, Florida, just a sophomore. Not much running room. Maybe picked up two or three out of the play. You know, Happy Gilmore, as his teammates call him, is six foot one, 220 pounds. And as we talked about before, he's a fast guy. He can make you miss in the open field. Next year, he will be a star at the tailback position for Missouri. If you look at him standing on the sideline during practice, he is a big guy. He is well built. Straight ahead, Gilmore trying to show some, some power. Well, speaking of some pretty good passing, how about today earlier, Oklahoma against Louisville of Conference USA. Of course, Bob Stoops led by quarterback Josh Heppel. 429 yards passing. Mackey from Oklahoma, a couple of touchdown catches. Chris Redman of Louisville threw two TDs, but he also gave up two on the interception route. That is a huge win for the Oklahoma Sooners. You know times have changed when you say Oklahoma <laughs> is leading the country or amongst the leaders in passing offense. Last time they wanted to pass, they recruited a kid by the name of Troy Aikman out of Henrietta, Oklahoma. Gordy, no place to go, but he does have it complete. The football is loose. Nebraska comes up with a loose ball. Julius Jackson on the recovery. Brandon Ford had the completion, coughed it up, and Jackson comes up with the loose ball. He returned a fumble last week for a touchdown. He has an interception and a fumble recovery tonight. Well, he's a big play guy. Every time something negative happens on the opponent's offense, number 50 is around the football. Now, you're going to see Ford here. He catches the ball, and he just gets it knocked out by Ralph Brown, number 22. The ball is on the ground, and because Jackson's hustling, he gets to the football. But Ralph Brown does just a great job of reaching in, knocking it out, and his counterpart, Mike Brown, comes over and helps jar loose. And the quarterback says, oh, man. Gardy just says, hey, nothing's going right tonight. A very costly turnover, Nebraska, now inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. Jackson, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week this past week. You know, Ron, when you look at a play like that, to me, that wasn't a fumble. That was a caused fumble, you know, by the defense. There was a couple of good hits that knocked the ball. The defense earned that one. The offense didn't give it up. The defense earned that one. Julius wants to be an attorney. Right now, he's the martial law tonight. Second down and eight for Nebraska. Okay, this is an audible at the line of scrimmage. Crouch with the pitch. Back to Buckhalter. Left side, looks at the 20, inside down to the 18-yard line. Keeps the feet moving and keeps spinning. Crouch. Now, what Crouch does with the line of scrimmage, he's reading. Now, you're going to see number eight, Clarence Jones. He's coming across. He takes Crouch. Crouch ditches the ball off. Obviously, Buck Kohler doesn't get tackled in the alley, gets up the field for a positive game. But that is all on the quarterback, reading it and get, getting caught in the blitz. Missouri got caught in the blitz. And it was a gain of nine, sets up a first and ten, and again, Nebraska knocking on the door. We already have a 53-yard TD toss here in the second half. Crouch keeps it down to the 15, the 14-yard line. Justin Smith showing his speed again, catching him from behind. Justin Smith is the kind of player, too, that presses. Wouldn't you say that things may not be going well, and instead of trying to go through the door, he decides to go through the wall. Yeah, but I like guys like that. I, hey, give me 100 guys like that any day of the week because he plays full speed. Last year, he was a little bit of a diamond in the rough, but this year, and certainly in this game, he's a shining diamond right now. And now I know why they call him Godzilla. Tyrone Euler has checked in at fullback, joining Carell Buckholder. Whistles are blowing. You know, going back to Smith for a second, I talked about in the open, he was the biggest recruit in Larry Smith's tenure here as a head coach. And one of the reasons he came here is his sister's here. His sister, Sarah, is a Tiger hostess, and she influenced Justin to come to the University of Missouri. Well, the officials talked it over, no penalty. They were checking the clock. They want to make sure it was all reset, so Nebraska will have it. Second down and seven from the 15-yard line of the Tigers. Missouri fans were expecting a lot better tonight. 
Crouch keeps it. He is not afraid to take a hit. As he gets down to the 10-yard line. Crouch is six foot, but he has a solid 200 pounds, and you have to be solid to take the hit that a Nebraska quarterback takes. And look at him right here. Look at that. He's got bigger shoulder pads than most quarterbacks. He's got running back shoulder pads, and he uses them, obviously, for protection because he knows he's going to be carrying the ball an average of about 20 times per game. But this is a complicated offense to learn, and right now he's showing evidence that he's got great command of this offense. An offense that has averaged better than 35 points a game 12 of the last 13 years. Crouch with the pitch, tiptoeing down the sideline, but Palmer tries to get in. Touchdown, Nebraska! Well, they forced the pitch, Artie. Clarence Jones, again, from his safety position, he's up in there, but the ball gets dished off, and Buckholter makes it into the end zone. That might have been in the Simon era that time in the Missouri defense because you had two players on the quarterback. You need some inside-out rundown to the tailback. I tell you, I think his foot was out of bounds. That replay showed that he was tiptoeing out of the line. One of the linesmen got absolutely hammered on the play and couldn't see it. Well, I think the crowd agrees with you. I'm, I'm always the hometown guy. Josh Brown kicks the extra point with 3.31 to play in the third quarter. Nebraska's hung 14 on Missouri here in the third. Our score, 33 to 3. in attendance and outside of the 3,500 Nebraska fans, they did not like that touchdown. Doesn't matter. Threes are the numbers. 33 to 3 is our score with 331 left to play in the third. And once again, Ricardo Rhodes and Travis Jarvis have to receive this kick. That's going to sail out of bounds. Penalty flag will be tossed. That might be Nebraska's first mistake on special teams tonight. Well, Haydenfeld's first mistake. Let's take a look at that touchdown again. And it appeared on the replay, once again, we have the luxury that he stepped out twice. Well, he might have right there. Look at that. He's right on the end line, which means he's out of bounds. So that's one. And right there. He's out of bounds again. So I, maybe the fans were right. But yeah. And the lineman, you saw him stumbling on the first time. And it looked like he got hit and just couldn't see exactly. He didn't have time to get his bearings. And that's, that's a tough job to do. Well, because the ball is out of bounds, Missouri will take over first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. The offense that was high octane and running on all cylinders last week is clogged, mainly because of that Nebraska defense. Gordy, the quarterback, pitches back, not much running room. Well, there have been a lot of distractions for the Nebraska Cornhuskers the last couple of weeks. Of course, D'Angelo Evans leaving the team, then Frank Solich deciding not to take him back. The controversy with Bobby Newcomb. And, of course, with Eric Crouch. A lot of controversy, but this team is so resilient, and I think it starts at top. Well, when you communicate with your team about problems, the team believes you as a head football coach. And I think that's what Frank Solich did a week ago. And sometimes adversity can bring a team together. And I think that's happened a little bit here tonight with the Nebraska. On second and ten. Straight ahead, not much running room. And last night we had a chance to spend some time with Frank Solich, and he talked about the leadership on this team and the resiliency of the Huskers. I like the makeup of, uh, of our football team. I, I think they're tremendous in terms of their work ethic, what they've done in the offseason to prepare for this year. Um, and they, are, they really have an excellent chemistry. So uh, I feel very good about our team. You know, every team has problems. Exactly. It's just in Nebraska, when you have a problem, everybody's going to know about it because they are scrutinized so much by the media. So, you know, he's done a good job of handling this whole situation. And just, hey, keep your eye on the target. That's the game. And Dory lets it fly. The pass is complete and dropped. Now they're saying it is an incomplete pass intended for Kent Lehman, the senior out of Kirkwood, Missouri. Boy, the hit was level, but we may have a late hit on Doherty, who is down. The penalty flag right at the 30-yard line. 
that's the reason Mike Brown, number 21, is an All-American football player because of that type of play in breaking up a pass. He is all over this football field when the ball is in the air. Well, Doherty hurt his knee a couple of weeks ago, has been suffering. Of course, you have the backup who has playing time, so that's not a problem, but you hope that Jim Doherty's okay. And that's the advantage of having two quarterbacks that play a great deal, is you don't miss a beat, so to speak, when one goes out. Well, he's going to be helped off the field. Pass was intended for Kent Lehman, who's looking for his 25th consecutive game with a reception, which would tie the Missouri record, and so far tonight he hasn't had it. We'll get you an update on Jim Doherty right after this. Jared Gilpin set the kick it away. And Joe Walker standing on his 20 set to receive it. The wind has calmed down here, but it is a beautiful night. Now, Walker holds an NC2A record by returning a kickoff, a punt, and an interception in one year for a touchdown. Did it last season? Did it last season. I think he's really an outstanding player. And he, he's the nickelback, you know, for, for Nebraska. He's really a good football player. This is returnable. The ball is loose. Penalty flag is thrown, and we'll have the infamous halo rule. Didn't give Walker a whole lot of room for that 36-yard kick to be caught. And we do have a penalty, and it's going to give Nebraska even better field position. A cover man cannot be within two yards, six feet, of a punt returner when he's attempting to catch the football. It's a safety rule, and I think it's a great one. Violation of the two-yard halo will be at a five-yard penalty. First and ten. Now watch Duncan number seven here. See, he's right there. That's too close. You gotta give him six feet in which to catch the punt. Now, but you know what I love though? Did you see Bobby Newcomb number twelve come over and throw a block? Here's Bobby Newcomb. That was a quarterback. That's now the punt returner and a wing back protecting his buddy back there. You gotta just love that type of passion for playing the game out of Bobby Newcomb. Well, that proves what kind of professional he is. Oh, absolutely. You know that he's got enough fortitude to step right in there and say okay I'm not the starting quarterback but I'm still playing in this game. Buck Halder on the left side he gets a couple of yards just a reminder we have more college football coming your way next week. As you will see Missouri Tigers once again versus Memphis Memphis gave Tennessee everything they could handle today only lost to the Volunteers by one and of course Texas A&M Texas Tech already and I will be in Lubbock Texas Spike Dykes has had a week off already he will be ready for RC Slocum and company. And, of course, Oregon and Washington, that'll get underway. Everything at 3.30 Eastern time here on Fox Sports Net. Great day. Old Spike, he's got a couple Spike-isms already lined up for us, I'm sure. He's got to get his team healthy again, though. You know, you got to get right. Ricky Williams back in that backfield and run the football. And Rob Peters, the quarterback, maybe out. But Kingsbury may be quarterback in the Red Raiders next week. Keeping it on the ground, and of course the offensive line in Nebraska just wearing down that defensive line. Tyrone Euler, the redshirt freshman out of Battle Creek, Nebraska on the carry. Euler. Along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens, I'm Rob Thulin. Welcome you back to Memorial Stadium in Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri, where the number six Nebraska Cornhuskers take it on the Missouri Tigers for the 93rd time. Missouri trying to snap a 20-game losing streak to Nebraska, but right now it has been all the Huskers. 33 to three is our score as we are in the final seconds of quarter number three. Krause pitches back to Buck Calder. First down, look out. Running room. Will he go? Stops at the one yard line by Carlos Posey. That's the kind of speed Nebraska's looking for out of their eye back. The ability to take it all the way when you get the opportunity. 57 yards on the carry by Carell Buckholder. I watch Krause get on the corner. He sees a black shirt, number eight Jones again. And look, there's no one in the quote alley right there. Missouri's got to get people inside out. Buckholder will make you miss. Now you're going to see Odom come over, number 39, but he overruns and Buckholder is off to the races. Excellent effort by Carlos Posey, number five, at chasing the big guy from Mississippi down. That is his longest run of the year, and that run alone doubled his output in the previous three games. Penalty flag is thrown. 
couple penalty flags are thrown right at the line of scrimmage and everybody's kicking around and having a little scrum have to listen in looks like a couple people were jumping not exactly sure who it was well it's a great situation for Nebraska you got first and goal inside the five Randy Kristall a referee offside on the defense the corner will be extended by one play you know that happens sometimes in goal line situations because the defensive players are trying to crowd the line of scrimmage so that they don't create an opening and what happens you inadvertently line up offside sometimes that's a common penalty that's why the guy at the end of the line of scrimmage has got to say hey you got to get back a little bit you guys inside that way gray over that might be his job that's a great view of it right there Crouch, look out ball is loose and Nebraska recovers, but Eric Crouch took a huge hit by Steve Erickson, the senior out of Richardson, Texas. What an emotional lift that would have been for Missouri if they would have been uh -oh. able to recover that fumble. Not only do you prevent the touchdown, obviously, but you get the ball. And that's the way the third quarter will come to end. Uh, come to an end, and Eric Crouch will remember the final play. 33 to three with one quarter left. 33 to 3 as we head to the final quarter. Artie Gigantino joins me once again. And Artie, Nebraska is in a rhythm right now. Absolutely. They're in a zone. And I think Frank Solich is doing a great job of calling plays. But they have confidence in what their quarterback can do, but also that running game. You're starting to see that running game real cranked up. Frank Solich will try to hammer it in here right now. It is second down and goal to go. Ball is on the 11 yard line. Buck Calder in the backfield. Crouch three-step drop looking for the end zone, and it is incomplete, knocked away at the last second. Intended for Wilson Thomas, the freshman out of Omaha, Nebraska. Andre Roberson, pretty good job on the coverage, number 15, the junior out of Houston, Texas. You know, Wilson's six foot five, and they practiced this play last night. He looks like a basketball player. He's a guy that high jumps six seven. He's a triple jumper, but he does look like a basketball forward. And that's the kind of person you want to throw a fade to in the end zone, because he's going to tower over any defensive back. Well, that brings up a third down and goal from the 11. Pretty good defensive stand by the Missouri Tigers. The big play, of course, Eric Crouch getting hit from behind and losing the football. Crouch, the pick, pitch back to Buck Calder. Shaking and making his way down to the three, and he will be kicked out of Pater. And Eric Crouch that time just got leveled as he dished the ball off to Buck Calder. But that's the price you pay when you're a quarterback in this offense. Somebody's going to hit you, at least most of the times, defense will hit the quarterback each and every time. It's a free shot at the quarterback. And Nebraska sending in their field goal unit. They're going for it. No, they're going to go for it now. Started to bring in the field goal unit, but on fourth down and goal from the four, Kraut stays in. Now look at this formation. You're going to see Nebraska lined up in the triple eye. They've got three players stacked behind the quarterback. Kraut keeps it, looking to put it up in the air. The corner of the end zone, and the pass is incomplete again. It was Andre Roberson out of the coverage intended for Tracy Wistrom, the younger brother of Grant Wistrom. Well, it may be a little too little too late, but it was a pretty good defensive stand by the Tigers. Hats off to them on that one. And Roberson made a good play, and he was not fooled by the play-action fake in the backfield because when you look at that formation, you think run, and that's what Nebraska utilizes it for most of the time. And the Missouri offense will begin first and ten on their three-yard line. Well, defense has been the word for the Nebraska Cornhuskers today. Dangerous position, though, for Missouri. Two wide outs, bottom of your straight eye formation. Farmer lets it fly, a little waggling, pass is incomplete. Intended for Eric Spencer out of Houston, Texas. And he had the step. You know, he was open. There was really no help from the safety that time. That was very much of a catchable ball. Now watch what happens. The safety's up here. He's playing run, and he's thinking inside. And all Spencer's running right down the field at the bottom, and he's got a chance to catch that. 
Nebraska puts a lot of pressure on their quarterbacks by playing man-to-man -man without a lot of help from the safety. But they're good enough to do it. Absolutely. Well, Jim Gordy, we saw him limping off the field a few moments ago. Palmer's come in. They're trying to hammer away with Zane Gilmore now for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's check in with our College Football Saturday Studios and Kevin Frazier. Kevin? Guys, Hurricane Floyd forced East Carolina to move their game against Miami to Raleigh. But these Hurricanes, the ones from Miami, can't stop the Pirates. That's Keith Stokes with the score from 27 yards out. Carolina leads 27-23. A Penn State hangover for Miami? Absolutely. And boy, you know, if you're Butch Davis, you don't want that to happen because you got to go beat East Carolina to get Miami back in the national spotlight. On third down, Palmer rolls out as a man and is complete up to the 14-yard line. Kareem Wise out of Baton Rouge. Here's the penalty flag. Penalty flag is thrown. Fans started booing. Larry Smith doesn't like it. And it might just give the Tigers a first down. Oh, personal foul against Missouri. Larry Smith wants to know who's it on. That was after the play, obviously. He's pleading his case, but you have a feeling he's not going to win it. Now we have an official's timeout. Now they're going to talk about it. I don't think the officials uh, necessarily agree on it. And, and we don't have instant replay in college yet, do we? I don't know. Well, we can have it. <laughs> we could it's be the count. judge and jury up here. Now they're going to check for the first down or to see exactly how far it is. They're going to measure it first. Okay, it's a fourth down. It's a fourth down. I'll tell you, Ron, I did not see it. I didn't either. Unless a coach was out of the coaching box or it came from the sideline somehow, but I did not see a personal foul. And this is a tough choice for Larry Smith here because you'd like to go for it on fourth down if it's only, you know, inches. Well, that was close. That was very, very close. Was he kicking or something here? I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know why. I, don't. I guess he thought he was trying to kick him. <laughs> That kid's kicked me hard the for that. It'll be half the distance to the goal, fourth down. Didn't see it. Unless he, unless, like right. you said, he, he interpreted the fact I that, guess. that Wise was trying to kick the defender. Update on Jim Doherty, by the way. He has a strained left knee, and he will not return. So the quarterbacking job belongs in the hand of Kirk Farmer, but not on this one because they're going to have to kick it away. Once again, if you just joined us early in the first quarter, two bad snaps by Missouri on punts. Led to nine Nebraska points since then. They've been doing quite well. And the field position tonight has been all Nebraska. Just like here now, Nebraska's going to get the ball inside the 50 again, regardless of what kind of punt it is. Mm -hmm. Stolich talked about field position. Yeah, yeah, well, two tough teams, that's what happens. And the kicking game dictates field position in football, and so do turnovers. Nebraska not going forward. This is a nice kick by Gilpin. At the 42, Bobby Newcomb dancing away, and look out. Boy, he is so dangerous. You put him with Joe Walker back there, and that is a couple of punt return guys that can really explode. And that was some shake and bake there. He made about four Missouri cover people miss it. we got to remember, though, when he was a freshman, I'm talking about Bobby Newcomb, he returned 12 punts for 244 yards. Now, this guy is a big-time punt returner. And, you know, maybe for this football team with Crouch at quarterback and him at wingback, it is the best of both worlds because you get two top flight athletes on the football field at the same time and touching the football. Well, Missouri last in the NCAA in net punting. That was a 47-yard kick, 17 on the return. Just straight ahead. Dan Alexander getting playing time again. Alexander. Trying to bang over that right side of Dominic Rayola, Russ Hochstein. Eric Clemens, how about a national car rental game summary? Well, here you see it in Nebraska, especially going to the ground attack when they got the big lead. Buckhalter over 124 yards today. Crouch, 143 yards passing. And as we said, look at the rushing plays, 41 for 249. But look at the passing plays, 143. Back to you, Ron. All right, Eric, Dan Alexander over the right side, banging his way. 
Okay, Artie, I'm going to put you on a spot. Give a grade to this Nebraska offense, and there were a lot of people questioning it after last week's game against Southern Miss, but put a little asterisk there. Southern Miss is a good football team. Oh, yeah, Southern Miss is a real good football team. This is a B-plus effort by, uh, in my mind tonight because they threw the ball early in the game when they had to. But this guy, and Dan Alexander, and Eric Crouch have got this offense going. You look at Coral Buckholter, he's happy tonight because he's carried the football and he made some big plays. And they're showing they can't all the day. Yeah, I think this is absolutely a B plus and it's not over yet. Crouch keeps it showing some running room. Inside the 20, still on his feet, inside the 10 down to the nine-yard line. Make that an A minus. <laughs> <laughs> Fair weather. Clarence Jones, number eight, comes across the line of scrimmage. He sees the option come at him, but this time he gets fooled and he goes for the pitch. Now his assignment was to feather the quarterback, but you gotta take the quarterback first. Crouch does a great job of reading his eyes, turns it up the football field, and makes a big game. Option football is very difficult to defend. Nebraska option football, very difficult to defend also. This time straight ahead, the Missouri defense there to meet him. I always felt Nebraska's offense and their option offense was great because they did such a great job of blocking. And their fullbacks are blockers mostly. Now you saw, you know, Euler hit it up in there. You see Miller once in a while hit it up in there. But their fullbacks do a great, great job of blocking. Just a reminder, USC and the Oregon Ducks coming up immediately following this game here on Fox Sports Net. Eric Crouch now 15 carries, 92 yards, trying to become the first 100-yard rusher this year, which is something kind of odd when you talk about Nebraska run of the football. Tonight, 278 total. Crouch right side, gives it up to Alexander. Ho, oh, pops big time Carlos Posey. He just lowered the shoulder and put every bit of 245 into him. Boy, is he a, is he a stud. When he gets running, he is tough to tackle. We have to listen to this one. This was pad on pad. <laughs> Check your dentures. But here's what Nebraska does, though. They got you a little bit tired now. Your defense has got to run up and down the line of scrimmage because you're chasing the quarterback. You get a little tired, and then you just hammer them up inside with the power game, and then you loosen them up with the pitch game on the option. Third and goal, ball is out of four-yard line. Crouch has to give it up. Alexander right side, and he strolls into the right side of the end zone for the touchdown. Alexander's second rushing touchdown of the year. Well, they're showing that they're back. Rhythm and timing with new quarterbacks, two quarterbacks, sometimes takes two or three or four games to get back into a groove. You know, one other thing people will forget, Nebraska missed in spring practice 11 starters either during the entire spring or during part of the spring. Bobby Newcomb was there the entire spring. Well, Dan Alexander with touchdown number two, running the football on the year. Coming right at you. The extra point was good and a race to buy a bundle. Well, the Huskers have not been out Fox tonight. They lead handily, the number six team in the country. 40 to three is the score, and you can see the Missouri sidelines and the dejection, but there is still a lot of football left. Yeah, you know what? They cannot use this game as the end of the season. That's the problem when you play a big game like this early in the year. They've got a lot of football left to play. Missouri can go to a bowl game again this year. They're a very good young football team. And a bowl win last year. The kick into the end zone, and they're going to wisely take a seat, Ricardo Rhodes. Nebraska does have a way of playing well on the road. You can see the Road Warriors in the 90s. They've only lost 7 of 41 games. That is the best in Division 1A. Yeah, they're pretty good at home, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Frank Solich, is, is, as a head coach now, is 4-3 and three on the road, and he's 8-1 and one at home. But, you know, he's had some tough games on the road. And uh, losing the bowl game a year ago at, at Arizona in the Holiday Bowl. But Frank has done a good job of keeping this football team together and not allowing the distractions of some pro player problems to bring down what so many positives are in this program. The pass to Lehman complete. He double catches it. But it is good. 
Just a reminder, coming up next, more exciting college football action here on Fox Sports Net. Number 16, USC versus the Ducks of Oregon. Coming up immediately following our contest here on Fox Sports Net. Well, Missouri has dropped 35 consecutive games to AP top 10 teams. Of course, Carson Palmer of USC, the quarterback. Three touchdowns, a couple of interceptions. They'll be coming up next. That was Lehman's 25th game, which he has caught at least one pass, and that ties the Missouri record. Try to break it next week versus Memphis. Barber is going to be done. Nebraska now playing a lot of reserves. You see Smith come into the picture, number 92. But th that's why they're a good football team, is because they have the ability to play in games like this some of their younger players to get them a shot at making some plays. Well, so, it's a good time me, to do it. It's a great time to do it. It's a great time to do it. But there's pressure on these young guys because they don't want to give up yardage that hurts the statistics of the first team defense. Winston Smith out of Sherman, Texas. Robert takes a hit, ball is loose, but it rolls out of bounds. Boy, Nebraska looks like they're just teeing off even with their reserves here with just uh, over uh, 8.50 to play in the fourth. He's hurting. Frank Stella, number 34, just drilled him on the corner. Stella is a guy who's an outside linebacker, but he also returns kicks, and he's an explosive guy. And, you know, poor Kurt Farmer here, he's 6'5", he's about 210 pounds. That's a big, lean target that a guy like Stella can take off into. And that's what happened that time. Coaches call him the real deal. Well, it's still third down, and it's a bunch. Third and 14. From the shotgun, Kirk Farmer. Here comes the rush by Nebraska. Farmer throwing it out of rope. Batted away at the last second. Dewan Gross, the redshirt freshman out of Garfield Heights, Ohio, with the pass breakup. It was intended for Eric Spencer. Good move to the football that time by Gross. The ball's in the air. He sees the football, and he plays volleyball with the football. That's, that's excellent concentration, and secondary coach George Darlington is just going to love that. Especially when one of your young players make a play like that. Yeah. Breaking on the football is what they try to teach those guys. And once again, Missouri forced to kick it away as the stands start to empty here at Burrow Field. The expectations were so high. Larry Smith told us yesterday it's not... Can they do it this year? It's will they do it? Because well, they felt the last two years they could play. Well, that's together. what happens, though, when you just lose the last two games by seven points. They weren't blowouts. They felt mentally and physically they were able to compete with Nebraska and prevent the blowout. Well, Nebraska calls a timeout with 8.49 left to play in the ball game, and they lead Missouri 40-3. Let's call it football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Still ahead, the final game of our triple header is 16th ranked USC pays a visit to Eugene. It's Oregon's high powered offense versus the Trojans' defense, and it's next after Missouri and Nebraska. But right now, let's go back to Columbia, guys. In the fourth quarter, Nebraska winning handily, and Missouri's going to have to kick it away. Gilpin's going to have to ice the leg down after tonight. Since the fiasco in the opening quarter, he has done a nice job. Bobby Newcomb again, exploding. 40 yards on the kick, but a 12-yard return. So Newcomb with a 17-yard return and a 12-yard return. Coaches love seeing that. You have to respect them. We saw that today with Kansas State and Iowa State punting to David Allen, returns it for a touchdown. That gives Nebraska another weapon. You have to start kicking away from guys like yeah, that. Yeah, but the problem is you can't kick away from him because you're going to kick it to exactly. Joe Walker, who's also an excellent return guy. I think Nebraska's got a great weapon back there with that return game. And a new quarterback come in, Jeff Perino, the senior out of Durango, Colorado. Has had some major knee problems and some injuries. Has been granted another year of eligibility, and it's great to see Frank Solich allowing him to take a couple of snaps here. Marino keeps it, has some running room up to the 45, and a 50 penalty flag has been thrown. Clarence Jones runs him out of bounds. Marino, a 6'2, 210 pound senior. But as we mentioned, we do have a penalty, and it will go against the Huskers. 
At the beginning of the game, we talked about the keys. Let's revisit those and kind of update things. Well, Nebraska, we said they couldn't turn the ball over. They've had two tonight, but they haven't been hurt by him. Maintain their defense intensity. Absolutely. This defense has played marvelous football tonight. And lastly, the punt and kickoff returns. They're averaging 10 yards of return. But what that doesn't tell you is the great field position that their returns have set up. So I think they've done tonight what they set out to do. Now, Frank Solich is not going to like the two turnovers, but he can live with it because he's gotten 40 points. Mm -hmm. There you see Perino sat out 19 to 97 and 1998 because of a medical hardship. The numbers on him. He was a student assistant last year. Oh. Helped him coach. Three major knee surgeries. Actually, back in 96, he was listed as the backup to Scott Frost. But the knees just kind of gave out. Most doctors felt he would never play again. That hasn't been the case. And the Missouri Keys. Well, not very good so far because we wa they wanted first down success, but they're only averaging 3.1 yards per play on first down. Control Eric Crouch. They have not done that. He's had 235 total yards, but he's been sensational at running the football, and obviously their punting unit let them down at the beginning of the game by giving up not only a safety, but great field position, which resulted in a touchdown. This is Duran Diedrich from Canada. Can't get the handle on it. Maybe his hands were too warm. Marino, pretty good pitch. Diedrich, a six foot, 250 pound freshman. Boy, Frank's going with some of the young guys tonight. You know, you look at option football. The option is hard to play. This pitch goes behind him, and he reaches back with one hand and misses it. Boy, there's a lot of timing and precision between quarterback and pitch man on the option. And Frank Solich knows it better than anybody. That pitch man has got to keep his eyes on the football because that baby can come at him at any time. Loss of seven brings up a third down and 24. This is Nebraska's passing formation now with four wide receivers in the game and no tight end. Riddle does not pass it, keeps it on the ground. He has a little running room. Crosses the 40 up to the 45, just past the original line of scrimmage before Julian Jones brings him down. So Perino with his first two carries for the Nebraska Cornhuskers in his career. And what you try to do with that, you want to either throw from it or you spread the defense out and you run the option, which is exactly what he did that time. But as you saw, because the defense was spread out, there was a hole up inside in which he hit. Not much to cheer about for the Missouri faithful that are still in the stands. Over 68,000 came to see this football game tonight. And it started out slowly and it got worse for Missouri. I still believe those two mishaps on the punt really hurt him in terms of momentum and confidence. This kick will sail into the end zone and Missouri will begin first and 10 from their own 20 with 6.55 to play in the ball game. A 50-yard, 55-yard kick by Dan Haydenfeld will return in a moment. Gucci of the defense of Missouri, the junior out of Holt Summit, Missouri, and the look tells it all tonight. He's put a lot of effort in, but it has been all Nebraska in this football game. Kirk Farmer, Zane Gilmore remain in the football game. Once again, Jim Doherty, strained left knee, will not return. Farmer straight drop, fires it, incomplete. And for a Dr. Pepper game break, let's send it over to Kevin Frazier. Kevin? Guys, the feel-good story of the day and also the biggest upset, 27-23, East Carolina knocks off Miami. They're playing the game in North Carolina State, of course, because of Hurricane Floyd and what it did to their school. Those goalposts are going back to Greenville, and the students deserve them. Boy, the upsets continue in college football. East Carolina, big win over Miami. Ooh, that hurts for Butch Davis. Second down and 10, ball on the 20. Farmer straight drop, double pumps, and he is going to be dropped. Back at the 18-yard line, another sack for that Nebraska defense. Wickman comes up with the sack. The executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating for two producer of college football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game was produced by Mike Helling, directed by Ken Faust. College Football Saturday Studio Show was produced by Loy Maxson and directed by Joe Whitus. Vice President of Field Operations is Andrea Jenkins. Thank you, folks. Third down and 11 for Farmer. 
now you just don't want to get Farmer hurt. The rush is coming. Farmer launching it deep, has a man overthrown. Intended for Kareem Wise, the senior out of Baton Rouge. Yeah, you know, it was a well-thrown pass. His accuracy was a little bit off, but these are the kind of situations that give young quarterbacks and receivers like Wise experience in playing the game together. Now, Wise is a senior. He'll be gone, but this is great for Farmer to see this kind of pressure because you don't get it like that in practice, obviously. Once again, Gilpin set to kick it away. One thing Larry Smith has worked on, he's worked on a couple of things. First of all, he wants the ball back in less in about a second on the snap. Last year they had a hang time of 380. He says, I wanted 4-2 or better. Well, 4-5 is great, but it, you know, sometimes guys just can't do it. I mean, you either have the leg or you don't. Again, the punt coverage against some running room. Joe Walker this time cannot get away. 35 yards on the kick, we'll call it six on the return. And if Missouri really wants to get to that next level, they have to continue to work on that kicking game. Reminder, SC and Oregon coming up straight ahead. Big time because, you know, no one pays attention, talking about in the media or in the fans and the stands, to the kicking game until something goes really good or really bad. You know, it's always something neutral until something negatively or positively big happens. Well, Nebraska into their flip card offense, which means we have to look at our flip cards to find out who's in the ball game because they're not on our spot boards. Pitch back to Diedrich out of Ontario, Canada, able to pick up a couple of yards. Do you think Frank Solich re recruits in Canada now? I think he recruits anywhere in the world to get a good football player. As we take a look at Carlos Polk, and he has played, I think, great for this defense. We talked about him at the Open. His problem tonight is the ball never got to him. That's right. Because his defenders in front of him were making the plays before they got to the linebacker area. That's a problem when you have a great defensive line. Your linebackers don't have big-time numbers and tackles. And Charlie McBride and Frank Solich, as you look at Frank here, love it when their linebackers don't have to make a lot of tackles. You tip your hat to your defensive line. Second down and seven for the Huskers. Clock not running fast enough for Missouri. Diedrich again stuffed this time behind the line of scrimmage. Missouri, it'll be 36 consecutive games that they've lost to a top 10 team. Last time they beat somebody ranked in the AP top 10 was 1981. Mississippi State 14 to 3. Haven't beaten a top 10 team at home since 1974 when they put a goose egg on Arizona State 9 nothing. It's great to have depth as we look at Dietrich here in the tailback, eyeback position because someone is going to get nicked up during the course of the year, whether it's Buckholter or Alexander. It's nice to know you got a young kid like this to put in there. When you look those third down oh conversions for Missouri, well, you can't win when you're going one out of 12. This is also the least number of points for their offense since 96, and that was at Nebraska. Dietrich just pounding away, and the youngster getting a little playing time. But, you know, if you're Missouri, you didn't know what kind of team you had because of your first two opponents, UAB and Western Michigan. You know, something about these eyebacks at Nebraska, they all look the same. They, do, don't they? they all look the same. They got the same <laughs> smile, the same eyes, and they run real good, and they run real hard. Well, we had a penalty flag thrown on the far side of the field. We'll have to listen in to see what it was. It's Nebraska use it using everybody that boarded the plane. Last Holding. Night. On the offense, it'll be a 10-yard penalty and remain third down. And Nebraska backed up again. Third that, down and 12 and for that, the Huskers. And that's going to disappoint Frank Solich because he knows to win the big games, you can't shoot yourself in the foot with penalties. And, and Nebraska traditionally, as you've talked about, and you're so right, has not been a penalized football team. They've been very, very efficient. And I think you as a coach, Artie, you look at the score, but there's so much beyond the score. Programming note, just a reminder, baseball Thursday coming your way. It'll be the Braves and the Mets from Shea Stadium or the Padres and the Diamondbacks. And, of course, we'll have a special edition of Baseball Thursday on Friday. Cubs versus Cardinals. How about Sammy and Mark McGuire? And, of course, the Padres versus the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks under Buck Showalter. What a great job they've done this year. Heading toward the playoffs. That'll be Thursday and Friday here on Fox Sports Net. All the baseball as we head toward the 1999 playoffs. I think that's something to cheer about. Make that six-hour drive a little bit easier. 
And Nebraska's going to have to kick it away on fourth down and ten. Aiden Felton has had a nice night. They were worried about punting this year. No worries with this young man. That is one bright spot for Missouri as far as the kick return. Number 21, Artie Johnson on the 19-yard return after the 38-yard kick by Hayden Felt. You know what's even more amazing about Hayden Felt? He was second in the country coming into the game with 48 and a half yards per punt. Is that when you play in Lincoln, you're kicking into the wind half the time, and the ball doesn't go very far. But that's just amazing what kind of cannon this guy has got in his right leg. And he's another former walk-on in yeah. Nebraska, which we talk a lot about when you do a Nebraska game. And I was telling Charlie McBride last night, we were talking about it, he is a defensive coordinator's best friend when you have a great punter. <laughs> because he buys you wonderful field position. I always had the punters and the kickers come to the defensive meetings treated them just like defensive football players. Layman in motion number 84. The pass is incomplete. Try to pull that one out of the wallet. Intended for Kent, but he did continue his streak. 25 consecutive games. Tying Kenny Holly's record here at Missouri. He's been banged up a little bit. Farmer's been banged up. Of course, Doherty, the other quarterback, got banged up tonight. And Missouri has to take on Memphis next week, which you'll see on Fox Net. And and Memphis gave uh, Tennessee all they could handle today. Tennessee winning by one. They got to regroup after a big game. Memphis always plays good against Tennessee a couple of years ago yeah. when they beat Tennessee in the Liberty Bowl. I did that game and boy, they just fly around. Farmer straight drop, pass is dropped. Now we thought the tight end would come more into play tonight. Unfortunately, it hasn't. Well, this Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net, it's hardcore football. This week's guest, three-time pro bowler, Seth Joyner. Joyner, of course, played 13 seasons in the NFL and offers a unique insight into the game. It's hardcore football Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. Well, the fans continuing to... It looks like Christmas, doesn't it? Christmas in Columbia here. Unfortunately, it was 85 degrees today. And there is Charlie McBride. Got a smile on his face, and... And he, it's Christmas for him today, I'll guarantee you. He didn't have to blow up today. No, either, he didn't he? blow up, but his defensive statistics have just been outstanding this year. His defense has only given up two touchdowns. On third and ten, Farmer's pass is complete. And the fans give Travis Garvin, the young freshman out of Bradenton, Florida, a round of applause. And the number nine looks familiar in Bradenton, Florida. He might put the connection together. Our Peter Warren. Those two guys were high school teammates. He's wearing the number. Peter said, I want you to wear my number. They would be playing basketball together. Yeah, and, you know, he signed with Tulane out of high school to go to Tulane and be a quarterback. But academically, it didn't work out for him there. He ended up transferring to Missouri, and now he's a wide receiver. Yvonne Batlack, the low setback. When Ward makes all his money next year, I hope he takes care of it. <laughs> Another catch by Travis Garvin. So with... 236 to play in the football game. Garvin with a couple of catches. You know what I, you know what I love about Travis Garvin? He's a, he's a vertical jump of 37 and a half. I mean, that's getting up there. He's got some spring. You're going to see him right here, run down the field, catch the football, put his shoulder down, and hold on to it. Big, young, tough, athletic receiver. Pick up a 33 on the play. He was a 19-point scorer in a high school basketball as his team won the state championship one year. 2.27 to play. Farmer, straight drop, looking for Pater. Garvin again, caught it. Touchdown, Missouri! Watch him here get up in the air. He sees the ball, he comes back, he gets up in the air, goes right over the top of Gross, pulls it down, and makes the play. Three catches, 71 yards on the drive. The last one, a 25-yard touchdown toss from Farmer. Farmer's sixth touchdown of the year. And that is Garvin's first. The extra point is good. So with 2.13 left to play in the football game, Farmer to Garvin, they connect, they get the touchdown, and it's 40 to 10, 2.13 left to play. 
Let's take a look at the upcoming schedules for uh, Missouri. They go to Memphis, then they go back to the Big 12 schedule. Right? Yeah, Colorado's lost today, but they're a, they're playing very well. Iowa State lost today, but it was a heart wrencher. You know, you got a chance against Kansas, obviously, and Texas Tech. When you play in the Big 12, it's not easy any week. And you know, we're seeing that around the country today. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. So, you gotta strap it on. I mean, we thought last week, big upsets. You know, Cincinnati over Wisconsin. You and know, uh, it happened again this week. And that's the one positive thing about playing Nebraska this early. Number one, you get them out of the way. But number two, you get a barometer as to where your football team is at in relation to the Big 12. Saw the scoring by quarters, and that equals to Nebraska leading 40 to 10. 213 to play in this football game. Kevin Frazier in the College Football Saturday Studios. We're going to get you to come. We're going to keep you update on what's going in, on in Columbia, but we also want to get you out to our next game, which is in Eugene, USC, taking on the uh, the USC Trojan, Oregon, and USC. In that game, we're going to get you out there in a moment, but right now we want to update you on a couple of scores real quick, or no, we're actually going to get you out to Eugene for that game. USC and Oregon, our Pac-10 finale of our triple header. I'm going to hang in there, just like you should. That's out to that game now. Randy Stella, Joe Walker, and John Belushi set to return the kick. Looking for an onside kick. Nobody even touched it. Went out of bounds. Penalty play. Didn't go 10. It's got to go 10 yards before you can attempt to recover. Nebraska did a smart thing. They just backed off. Well, you know what that is? That's called good coaching because the Nebraska return team knew the rules and knew what to do. And Larry Smith continues to coach, talking to his kicker, Brad Hamerick, the sophomore out of Chesterfield, Missouri. Coaches Kick don't stop coaching, do they? Let you take the ball at the inbound spot, first and 10. And you know, Larry Smith, his, his duties, so to speak, in the special teams area, he coaches the punter and he coaches the place kicker. I mean, that's his job to coach those guys. And he was giving him a piece of his mind that time. And Nebraska will have it first and 10 from Mizzou 41. Diedrich left side. 2.03 to play. This is the longest 10 minutes, I think, in Missouri history. When you're coaching on the sidelines and you're the in this situation already, how long is it? Well, I was never in a situation like this. <laughs> we were always winning, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. But it goes long. And, and you're, you're, like you said, you're kidding, but, you, but you're absolutely right. You, you look at the clock and you say, tick. It's got to go faster. I thought seconds were a lot quicker than that. And every time the ball goes out of bounds, you say, no, stay in bounds. Yeah. Please stay in bounds. Second down and five for Nebraska. Jeff Perino getting a couple of snaps here. Getting a couple runs. His first since having the three major knee surgeries. Marino. Just a reminder, we want to update you on baseball Thursday at 7 o'clock. It'll be the Braves versus the Mets and Padres Diamondbacks, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then on Friday, Cubs Cardinals or the Padres and the Diamondbacks all gets underway at 8 o'clock Eastern or 9.30 Eastern time. You'll see one or the other on our special edition of Baseball Thursday on Friday here on Fox Sports Net. That was good for a first down. First and 10, balls on the 30-yard line. Deep your right side. This young man showing a little speed, little moves. Well, the grass is cranking it up tonight. They, they've had over 450 yards total offense, and the Nebraska machine is just rolling down the field. Well, Nebraska, of course, hosts Oklahoma State next week. Then they host Iowa State. Then they go to Texas on October 23rd. Hosting an A&M on the 6th. Hosting Kansas State. And they close it out on the 26th versus Colorado. Not easy for them also. Circle that October 23rd date, folks, with Texas in Austin. 80,000 plus Memorial Stadium. Looking for the first down, needed to get just inside the 20. And that should do it. 
Larry Smith going over to congratulate Frank Solich, but it was a good game for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, number sixth in the country, and they could improve on that. Hardy, your final thoughts on the 40 to 10 victory by Nebraska? Well, the machine got rolling again tonight with Nebraska, and I think the move with Eric Crouch right now is looking like a a, a, a part of brilliance by by Frankie Solich because he is the key to this Nebraska offense and getting moving. So Nebraska is back. Not that it ever left, but people were critical that they weren't churning up enough points or enough yards. But they're back. 476 total yardage. They rushed for 333, which should put a smile on that man's face as Nebraska wins the ball game, the final again, 40 to 10. Just a reminder, coming up following the break, we'll head it back to Kellen and Kevin in our studio show at the Fox College Football Saturday Studios. Then, of course, USC and Oregon coming up straight ahead for Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens. I'm Rob Thulin. Stay tuned. More football straight ahead right here on Fox Sports Net. Who don't have it? Well, nature has a way of thinning out the herd. On the rebound, how's pounding around? We've seen this before from the feet of Kansas State's David Allen, but never from this far out. The 94-yard punt return against Iowa State tied the K-State and Big 12 record. It was his sixth punt return for a touchdown in his career. He needs just one more to tie the NCAA record. Colorado's Ben Kelly has had his own share of kick returns for touchdowns, and he was up to his old tricks again against Washington, returning a kick 98 yards for a touchdown. And when is Ben Kelly not in the right place at the right time? A week after returning a fumble 96 yards for a touchdown, he did it again against the Huskies, this time from 38 yards out. But the golden foot of the week belonged to Texas A&M's Terrence Kitchens. The Aggies had just awarded him a full scholarship on the Thursday before their game with Southern Miss. And he responded with this 62-yard field goal. At the time, that put him 8-for-8 eight eight in field goal attempts. Yeah, I knew how long it was before I kicked it because when they backed up the penalty, I looked to see how far it was. But I, I knew I had a shot at it because I've kicked one there from there before in practice, so I just gave it a shot. Another huge day for OU's Josh Heupel. 426 passing yards and five touchdowns. Full hum, two more OU passing records. Offense will normally strong arm the majority of highlight clips, like this one from Darren Davis. But let's take a little time to showcase some of last week's great defensive hits and highlights. Starting off with Texas A&M's two interception returns for touchdowns. Now strap on your best headgear or whatever you have laying around and get ready for some of last week's big hits. Pressure for the back side into the football game. OU's Josh Heupel was a big hit again for the second straight week. He's the Southwestern Bell Offensive Player of the Week. Defensively, the Aggies' Jason Webster added 10 tackles to that touchdown off a pick you just saw. Special teams was a tough call. This week, the voters went with K-State's David Allen. As for the Southwestern Bell Fans' Choice Player of the Week, for the third consecutive week, it's Josh Heifel of Oklahoma. The Sooner quarterback gets the nod after his outstanding five-touchdown